display. Welcome to Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania, and the NFHS broadcast of the PIAA 5A semifinal matchup between the Pine Richland Rams and the Governor Mifflin Mustangs. My name is Bruce Badgley. Eric Thomas will be along for a play-by-play -play in a few moments. But on a cloudy, kind of drizzly day, still not bad for football in Pennsylvania for late November. Uh, we're so glad that you're able to join us here uh, today. It's going to be a, a great matchup. Uh, what a lot of people are talking about is uh, the fact that these two teams really don't have any connect-the-dots opponents. Uh, both of them undefeated on the season. Pine Richland, 9-0. Governor Mifflin, 8-0. Uh, both teams are rather high scoring. Governor Mifflin averaging 56 points per game and Pine Richland, 48.8 points per game. Uh, defensively, they match up very similarly as well with Pine Richland at 9.1 points per game and Mifflin at 9.7. Um, we want to thank our sponsors here, Small Player Big Play, for their support of this NFHS broadcast. Also, Brute Athletic Apparel will be presenting a Player of the Game Award at the end of the game, sponsored by Brute. Um, they'll be getting, actually, a replica of this same uh, hoodie uh, that I'm wearing now. So thanks to our sponsors. and. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, both of these teams have some really stellar players. Um, Nick Singleton, probably the most high-profile player out here today. Uh, Nick is for the running back for Governor Mifflin. He's got offers from, I think, uh, 30 Division I colleges. Um, Cole Spencer leads Pine Richland. Um, they run a very wide-open uh, passing game uh, featuring Eli Yoakum as one of their top receivers. I think he's their all-time leader. And uh, also for um, Pine Richland, uh, Miguel Jackson, one of the stalwarts on defense, number 56. Um, he's going off to Liberty on a scholarship. You need to take an eye on him. Um, you also want to look for Luke Miller, Jeremiah Hazley, and Zach Waranka. And so we'll be shooting it back up for the national anthem and then Eric Thomas.
Welcome to Hollidaysburg High School for the PIAA Class 5A semifinal. Thanks to Bruce Badgel. You're here again from him coming up at halftime and also in our postgame show uh, here this afternoon. Eric Thomas and Fort Chapman back with you for another afternoon of PIAA semifinal action. Today we got a pair of unbeaten teams, one out of the WPIL, the champs in 5A, the Pine Richland Rams, 9-0. Head coach Eric Kasparovitz and the Governor Mifflin Mustangs, also undefeated out of the Berks County area, the District 3 champs. They got here a little bit differently than what Pine Richland did. They had a forfeit in their championship game with Warwick, so they have actually not played in two weeks. And uh, the winner of this game will go on to next weekend state championship game against Cathedral Prep out of Erie. They got to the state title game by forfeit. Upper Dublin had to forfeit the other semifinals, so Erie Prep is already there. And uh, Coach Chapman, we're going to see a pretty good game here today. We, let's start first with Pine Richland. This offense lights out all season long. Cole Spencer, the quarterback. Eli Yokim, the star wide receiver, the leading receiver in school history. How does Governor Mifflin come out and try to slow down this offense here this afternoon? Well, first of all, I think we're, we have two 5A teams here, but these are teams that are used to playing at the top level in the PIA for, for many years, uh, especially Pine Richland, Richland with their tradition and history of making deep runs into the, the top level, what used to be quad A. Then, you know, they were triple A for a while against Mannheim Central in the state final. So we have two teams that are playing high level football. And I think that defensively, Governor Mifflin obviously has not faced a team of this caliber. It's early on, it's gonna be interesting to see how they handle on the line of scrimmage. Up front, that front group, offensively for Pine Richland is very capable. They're very big and try to limit that line of scrimmage push and, and the mixture of run and pass. Eight mercy rule games for Pine Richland this season. The game everybody thought was going to be their biggest test, Gateway. They didn't play that game because Gateway had COVID issues, so that was off the schedule, and they have just blitzed through the rest of the WPIL. Uh, in the playoffs, South Fayette by 40, Penn Trafford in the semifinals, by 35 and then 35 over Peters Township. Eight Mercy Rule games we mentioned this season. Upper St. Clair is the only game that they did not get into the Mercy Rule. So we'll see a high-powered offense here tonight, uh, this afternoon rather, 233 yards passing a game, uh, total of just under 400 yards of offense this season. They've only fumbled the ball four times all year. So not only do you have an offense that's super efficient and high scoring and, and all kinds of stats and everything, they're very careful with the ball too. Spencer doesn't turn the ball over much either, just four interceptions. So eight total turnovers for this team and they've barely been tested. They've just blown everybody out and these turnovers haven't been a factor this season. And that's why it's gonna be so interesting to see how Governor Mifflin stacks up on the line of scrimmage as well as at the skill positions out on the perimeter because you're going to see a lot of diversity and run and pass mixture from this Pine Richland offense. The Governor Mifflin side of things, they are 8-0. and And again, we mentioned they had to get here by forfeit because Warwick could not play the district championship game. They also not really tested this season. They blitzed through the Burks 1 conference and they handled their non-conference slate of Wilson, their rival in the perennial power in 6A in District 3, just blew the doors off of them in week one, 48 to seven, and then handled Mifflin County. And then they got into the teeth of their schedule in Burks one, which they went undefeated in. This team is led by Nick Singleton. He's got 1200 yards rushing. He's gone over hundred yards seven times this season. And he is one of the best players, not just in the state of Pennsylvania, but now in the country. These new recruiting rankings that came out recently have him as a top 100 player in, this, in the country. So we're going to see one of the best talents in America at the running back position here today. But this Governor Mifflin offense has not been super diverse this year. They've relied really heavily on the run game. And they were on the other side of the ball here, the Pine Richland defense. I'm very anxious to see how they stack up and how they handle the Governor Mifflin rushing attack. Yeah, Governor Mifflin's offense facing a uh, defense led by Miguel Jackson. He's a school all-time leader in sacks, headed to Liberty, has 11 and a half this season, 16 and a half tackles for loss. We'll go over the lineups here uh, in a minute. But this Pine Richland defense, you mentioned him as a total, 88 and a half tackles for loss, 40 sacks, 12 interceptions. They've recovered five fumbles. They've blocked three punts. They've only averaged, uh, allowed nine points a game this season. Those numbers are pretty on par to how good they were last year, a team they thought had a deep run in them to get to the state championship last season, but ultimately fell short in the Whippeal final against Pitt Central Catholic by a field goal. But uh, this defense up front, the two ends, Connor Lenz, but we'll talk a lot today about Miguel Jackson. He is one of the best defensive players in the state. No doubt. And for the rest of 
this matchup, the Governor Mifflin defense will give you the lineups here momentarily. Cameron Stewart is another guy to watch defensively and offensively for Governor Mifflin. He's got eight tackles for loss. And uh, Nate Goodman. So a pair of defensive ends on both sides that are pretty stout. And uh, let's give you the lineups here real quick. We'll start with the Pine Richland offense. Their tackles are John Swisher and Harrison Hayes. Harrison Hayes also going to Liberty along with Miguel Jackson. Jackson is the right guard. The left guard is Spencer King in the center is Isaiah Kearns. We talked about Cole Spencer, the 5'10 senior out of the entire list of star quarterbacks that this Pine Richland program has had. Ben DiNucci is now back of the Dallas Cowboys. Phil Yurkovic, who led this team to a state championship, uh, both in football and got to the state championship game in basketball, starting quarterback at Boston College. Cole Spencer statistically is better than both of those guys. He is one of the top quarterbacks to ever come out of the WPIL. He's not done yet, and he thinks he's got a lot to write here in the next two weeks. He's thrown for 2,100 yards. His top target is Eli Yokim, 50 receptions this season and 15 touchdowns. He is the all-time leading receiver in Pine Richland history. They won't run the ball much, but when they do, they'll have a three-headed monster at the running back spot. Caden Schweiger, Brooks Eastburn, and Tristan Taylor all have at least 27 carries this season. So we'll see them. The tight ends are pretty good. Luke Miller and Jeremiah Hasley are the two that will share time at that position. So we'll see a load of those guys as the game goes on. For Governor Mifflin's defense, Cameron Stewart, Nate Goodman, at the ends, the inside guys are Mason Clark and Dominic Sheedy. The linebackers are Brandon Strasser and Trey Rock. Zach Parsons makes up the rest of that trio. The corners, Nick Singleton, Alonzo Anderson, Greg Suber, and Aiden Martin are the safeties. Now, Governor Mifflin did have a transfer into their program this season, Eden Johnson out of Philly, but he is ineligible for the playoffs because he transferred post-sophomore season. So the junior will not be able to play in the postseason, he has three interceptions this season, second on the team to Aiden Martin. So they'll be without him. That's why Greg Suber will get the start at the one safety spot, and that has been the case through the playoffs, although Governor Mifflin's only played one playoff game so far. They defeated Mechanicsburg in the district playoffs 66-14. to For the Mifflin offense, Connor Marinak will start at quarterback. Only 33 attempts all season long. But he has three rushing touchdowns, eight passing touchdowns against three interceptions. Nick Singleton, we mentioned him, 82 carries for 1,200 yards. And he has got a laundry list of teams that are knocking on his door trying to recruit him. And it is power five all over the place for Singleton, who, as we mentioned, became one of the top 100 players in the country in uh, the new rival rankings that came out. This week, he has gotten offers from Penn State, Pitt, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Arizona State, Boston College. Those appear to be his top teams. Everybody from Duke to Tennessee to North Carolina State to Nebraska, USC, Virginia, Virginia Tech. You go on and on, including Clemson, have all asked Singleton for his services at the next level. And he has yet to make a decision. But he is one of the best players in the entire country. We'll see him on display here this afternoon. Brandon Strasser is the other running back. Greg Super, when they throw the ball, will be the top target for Marniak. He'll, he leads the team with seven receptions for 208 yards. Cameron Stewart, the tight end, seven receptions for four touchdowns. And the line, Dominic Sheedy, Adam Hoffman on the ends, Devontae Phillip, Matt Griffith at the guards, and Dylan Cole will start at center. For Pine Richland's defense, their ends are Connor Lentz, Miguel Jackson, Cole Schrumann, and Jacob Domer on the inside. The linebackers, Luke Miller, Zach Warniak, uh, Warnacki is the middle linebacker, and Jeremiah Hasley is the other outside linebacker. Sam Neal and Charlie Mill, the corners, Caden Schweiger and Eli Yokim are the safeties. As you look at it here on the screen, Governor Mifflin will be in the white tops with the maroon and gold helmets and numbers, and Pine Richland, who has yet to make the field, and they're coming out now. They are in their green home uniforms with the white trim and the Ram logo on the side of the helmet. Nick Singleton, the running back, number 10. So keep an eye on that number. And Cameron Stewart is 11 for Governor Mifflin, so keep an eye on that number. And you'll see a lot of Yo Kim. He is number five for Pine Richland. So those are our highlight players here this afternoon. It's an overcast day in Holidaysburg. Great stadium, great setting for this semifinal. And the temperature in the low 50s here this afternoon. We don't expect any rain. There was a little bit of a drizzle on the way in. And there might be some light rain throughout the game, but nothing significant. 
It's about a 52% chance of rain here throughout the afternoon. Right now, actually, the temperature uh, is in the low 50s. It feels a little bit warmer here than what it really is. So hopefully good weather the rest of the way. And we get favorable conditions for this semifinal. 57 here at kickoff right now. So there's a shower in spots followed by periods of rain this afternoon. So hopefully we're out of here before all that progresses. As we are situated here this afternoon in Blair County, we hope you enjoyed last night's game with Jersey Shore and Lampeter Stroudsburg. That epic 39-35 win by Jersey Shore will complete the championship weekend puzzle here this afternoon with uh, the winner of this game. We'll keep you posted, too, on some of the other games that are going on uh, across the state. Just down the road at Mansion Park is the 6A semifinal between Central York and McDowell. And the winner of that game will face the winner of Satterton and St. Joe's Prep in the 6A championship. And here we'll complete the other half of the 5A championship matchup. Slew of games going on all over the state. We've got a nice crowd here from Berks County to support the Mustangs. And a decent crowd across the way to support the Rams. About a two-hour trip for Pine Richland and about three hours for Governor Mifflin to get here. So everybody making the trek up the turnpike or through the mountains to get here. And you can settle in and enjoy this one here this afternoon on the NFHS Network as we will have you covered wall-to-wall -wall here. And again, Bruce Badge will be back at halftime, and he'll have our post-game show this afternoon. Post-game show will award our brute player of the game. As we get set here for kickoff, lights are on. Eric, as you look at intangibles, both teams – obviously playing with a high level of confidence. Although when you, when you come out of the WPIAL and you're the champions at any level, that Pittsburgh league, you're just, you're, you're just, you're ready to, you're ready to believe that you can go the whole way. Governor Mifflin, on the other hand, while they're playing with a lot of confidence, I'm sure in the back of their minds, they're wondering, can we stay with this powerhouse Pine Richland team? Who's, been there numerous times before and, and done very well, including last year, as you alluded to, that came very close to potentially getting to the to the state championship, just fell a little bit short. And it's going to be very interesting to see as first out here in the first couple minutes how Mifflin handles the, the brute strength of, of the line of scrimmage and how they on the perimeter are able to match up both offensively and defensively as far as moving the ball and then stopping this Pine Richland high-powered offense. Pine Richland state finalists in 2003, 2014, and 2017. They won it all in 17, knocked off St. Joe's Prep. Actually handled them pretty easily in Phil Yurkovic's senior season. Governor Mifflin has never been there. And they are trying to get back. They're trying to get through the state semifinals. They have been to the district finals, and they have had some problems in the playoffs over the years, but they finally broke through this season. Just wonder, too, you know, you, you sometimes think, well, and this has been the oddest season, obviously, of all time, but to not play in two weeks and then have to come out here, and you're talking about early on, but right away have to face this team that, has played every week except one, and their their only game they missed was earlier in the season, two weeks off. That's a tough ask for a lot of teams. Absolutely. You know, we see that we see that in the pro level with the couple teams that for years have gotten buys, top two seeds in each confer conference. At the college level, we see it often for for forever with bowl games, but you're having – almost always way more than just one week off. You're usually having, at times, up to three to four weeks, if not more, bef between, you know, your last regular season game and then your bowl game. In this case, sometimes that week off can be very helpful. Heal up some different loose get that get, Just getting that week off to be able to get more in the weight room a little bit, get some fundamentals worked on, prepare for your next opponent. It, it can be an advantage. In this case, I'm just, I really think the mentality of Governor Mifflin, if they can stick around here and keep this ball game close in the first half, 
you're going to see more confidence begin to build with them to be able to stay in this football game and potentially pull off the upset. Pine Richland will get the kick to start the game here. And back deep to receive. They'll throw three guys out there to return at times. Jordan Burns is back deep to receive along with Caden Schweiger. So we'll get set to go here in this 5A semifinal. Winner again goes on to play Cathedral Prep from Erie next weekend in the state championship. And we're underway here from Hollidaysburg. It's a short end over end that's going to bounce out of bounds over on the far sideline. So Pine Richland will start things first and 10 from their own 35. You can always elect to have the kicking team re-kick five yards back. Looks like they're gonna take the ball at the 35, 25 yards from where the ball was initially kicked. Eric Kasparovitz, it's been well documented. His path to be the head coach here at Pine Richland was an All-American at North Hills High School, quarterback of that team. Went on to play defensive back at Pitt. Led them to a thrilling come from behind victory in the state finals in Altoona against the district power, the powerhouse out of District One. You remember who that was, Eric? Remember that here in a second. Cameron Stewart on play number one, and the pass is tipped and intercepted by Big Mason Clare, the defensive tackle. So right away, we see Cameron Stewart with that 6'5 wingspan. Just put those paws up there, and Mason Clare, the 260-pound senior defensive tackle diving effort, comes down with the interception. And it did not take long. What a defensive play to turn the tide immediately. This is exactly what was ordered for the Governor Mifflin football team. It's a gut punch early for Pine Richland. Again, they have not been pushed much this season, so you wonder how they respond here. Short field for Mifflin, 23 yards outside the end zone. Maranac will hand off on play one to Singleton, trying to stretch the edge, and he does get to the corner. And out of bounds on his own sideline, hit there by Charlie Mill, the cornerback, and that'll bring up second down. That was a quads unbalanced set by Governor Mifflin. Most likely when a team lines up in a set like that, they're gonna go to their strength. That's why they're in that unbalanced set. And they did. And the Big running back took the ball for a five-yard gain. Here's the same set the other way. And we get a whistle before the play can develop here. Looks like it's going to be on Pine Richland. Lining up in the neutral zone. On, yep. That's going to be enough for a first down for Governor Mifflin. So already some miscues here by this Pine Richland team. Eric, that Pine Richland coach, when he quarterbacked at North Hills, they were down by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. They came back and beat the team that your Central Dolphin Rams lost to in overtime, coached by Mike Petton. Central Bucks West. Central Bucks West. North Penn beat, or excuse me, North Hills beat them in that state championship by one point on a late two-point conversion. And another stoppage here by the officials as they talk about something here, and they will, they did not have a first down marked on the far sideline. So they do have the sticks marked. And they got to flip the board over there. Not sure why that was even a question. They were facing second and four. It's a five yard penalty. So Marinac will stand in the shotgun here. He's got Singleton sidecar. Hands off to Singleton. Nice move trying to go right through the teeth of defense down to about the 11 yard line. Two yard run for Singleton there and that'll bring up second down. 15 unsportsmanlike conduct wow. on the defense. Unbelievable. This. Just fall apart here by Pine Richland in the first. We haven't even played a minute yet. Turn the ball over, two penalties, a 15-yarder. It's going to be half the distance in this case. When you're a team out of the WPIL with a lot of physicality, you don't think they don't let that bother you. They think that they're going to come in here, as a lot of Western PA teams do, with and they 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 deserve the respect because of the what they've done in the past, and they're not feeling that this Governor Mifflin team is is going to reach th their level of play. And you do have to be careful early on that you don't let the momentum swing too far in one direction. you got to keep your poise out there, as I'm sure the coaching staff from Pine Richland is
going to relay to these def defensive players when they come off the field. It's another first down from Mifflin. Takes the ball down to the six. So half the distance here. First and goal for the Mustangs. They got two to the top of your screen. Aiden Martin's in the slide. They're going to keep it on the ground with Strausser. Strausser fighting for that extra yardage. Gets down to around the two-yard line. First down will be first and goal around the two for this Governor Mifflin offense, taking advantage of a quick turnover on play number one. Yeah, misspoke there. That was personal foul. Took it half the distance, but did not bring up a first down. It's first down and goal now from the two. They split the handoff. Singleton, Singleton fighting forward, and he is going to be short of the goal line. Down to about the one-yard line, so that'll bring up second and goal. Very tight splits on this goal line set. Giving the ball to their workhorse. Picked up negligible yards. They're still just in, but it's just inside the two-yard line. Good defensive stand there on the goal line set defensively for Pine Richland. Second and goal, Marinak under center this time. He's going to push forward. As we wait, they clear the pile, and he's going to be down at the one again. That'll bring up third down and goal. Hate to ask this early on. I mean, four down territory? No doubt. Okay. It looks like he got about half of that there. He was got about three quarters of a yard. They're now at the one yard line. Just inside the one. Martin and Subert to the top of your screen. Singleton with Strausser ahead of him. They're going to keep it on the ground. Strausser will dive forward, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. So Governor Mifflin with 9.52 to play makes Pine Richland pay for the turnover, and they take an early 6-0 lead. Let's see what Pine Richland's psyche is like. Governor Mifflin doing what you have to do in these games, taking advantage of the short field. And the point after by Jackson Schools is up, and it is good. So our score with 9.52 to go in the first quarter, it is Governor Mifflin 7 and Pine Richland nothing. Tonight's player of the game will receive small player big app custom hoodie from Brute Athletic Apparel. Visit BruteProShop.com to find amazing apparel made locally in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. Tonight's broadcast or this afternoon's broadcast is powered by Brute Athletic Apparel. Check out the replay here, the touchdown chat. Nothing fancy here. Just line up and hand it to Watch your Watch the board. quarterback expect. He, that fullback got there really quickly. You could see he was – good thing they kept on, held on to the football there because it was a quick hitter and nearly potential turnover there. Good reach and ride, though, by the quarterback to – Secure that and get Governor Mifflin in the end zone. What I find interesting in these type of games, and maybe you agree with this or not, but when teams put so much emotion behind early scores and things that go their way and the other side starts to settle in, when they settle in, that is, that's going to be the key here for Pine Richland. No doubt, no doubt. Going forward here. They can't get rattled. They can't worry about... Things not going their way. There's still plenty of time here. There's almost four full quarters left. It looks like Governor Mifflin is lined up. They kicked the last one out of bounds. It looked like their their plan is to kick the ball. The way the kickers has the tee angled to just they're going to that soft spot around the 20 yard line that is open there. Instead of just rather sending the ball deep. And they're lined up to do the same thing again. I remember live football at the high school level. If nobody touches it, that's a live ball. So they'll actually squib this one. They're going to just give up the yardage. Well, that's a lot of yardage they're giving up. They must have a lot of respect for this return game. Tristan Taylor, the return for Pine Richland that time. So the Rams, second offensive series here. They ran one play. Cameron Stewart made his presence felt right away. Big number 11, the 6'5 defensive end. He'll be on the opposite side of the formation to start this series. And Cole Spencer comes back out to try to lead his offense back from an early deficit. Empty set. 
And they'll run a lot of this today. They won't run the ball much. Spencer quick throw near side. Pass caught by Charlie Mill. And a nice gain on first down for the Rams to try to get themselves in a rhythm here. They go hurry up. You'll see a lot of tempo from this team. Here this afternoon, we got some offsides on the Mifflin sideline. You got to practice against the long cadence through the week. If you don't do that, these things are going to happen. You can't get back like you can in college, the NFL. They're outside of the defensive end. Even though the ball wasn't snapped, once you cross that neutral zone in high school, it's a five-yard encroachment penalty. It's enough for a Pine Richland first down. Zach Goodman guilty that time. Quick throw near side to Mill again. And Mill is wrestled down on the near sideline by Alonzo Anderson. Another short gain that time for Pine Richland. Gain of three that time. Now they're going to go with a spread set, but one back in the backfield. And that is Brooks Eastburn, who is back there with Spencer. And again, they'll rotate the running backs. Quick throw again. Finds his man, Hasley, and Hasley will dive forward and where they mark it. And Hasley will be just shy, it looks like, by the nose of the football for the first down. Aiden Martin to stop. Four wides again, two to each side. Option. They will go on the ground this time and have enough for the first down. Cole Spencer on the pickup. Trey Rock had to stop for Governor Mifflin. Again, tempo for this Rams offense. They will just go and go and go all game long. Screen. Quick throw. Nice catch by Yo. Kimmy lost the football. It's picked up by Suber on the far sideline. Well, that is Martin who lost the football himself. Governor Mifflin's going to maintain possession as Trey Rock was able to pick it up. Second turnover for Pine Richland here in the first four minutes. Watch the replay here. These quick screens can go either way, and it was nice play there. Got downfield blocking, and then bam, turnover. So many quick screen, wide receiver screens that go for big yardage are so close to being blown up, as was that one. So here comes Mifflin with a 7-0 lead already. And it looked like it was going to be a big gain, Eric, and all of a sudden a big hit, and... Ball pops out. Erniak under center this time. Singleton is the deep back. They'll hand it off Strausser. Strausser up the middle. He's into Pine Richland territory on a gain of three. Connor Lentz had to stop that time for Pine Richland. We almost had a double turnover on that. that First fumble, then we got a second fumble, and head up, heads up play by Governor Mifflin picking the ball up. Getting ball downfield for another about five yards after the, who was it, Rock, I think. Marinak will hand off. Actually, he'll keep this time. They'll option to Singleton. Wide pitch off Singleton's hands and out of bounds. And that'll mark the ball back towards the 48. It's going to be a loss of one. They're trying to run that option into the short side of field. High school football, the hash marks are wider than college. College are a little wider than the pros. So you don't have a whole lot of room on the short side to run that option. But a lot of teams like to do it away from your strength. There was a tight end that way, two receivers the other side. If you go into the run into the boundary like that, a lot of times you're not gonna, you're gonna get a better defensive look and get better numbers. Tyler Minnick is out there. Top of your screen for Governor Mifflin as Merrinack will throw. Pass on the comeback route is caught near side West Grillo. And he is going to be close to a He's Mustangs got it. first down. He does have it. Forward progress just in front of the line. Good execution on third down, sprinting out to the trips. It's the fourth first down for Governor Mifflin here in the early going. Haven't even played half the quarter yet. Trying to capitalize here on another Pine Richland turnover and go up two scores. End over set to the left. They go weak side. Singleton through the hole, sheds a tackle and is dragged out of bounds. 
on his own sideline, near side by Connor Lentz. Another first down run for Singleton in this Mustangs offense. Interesting call. They went to the guard tackle side. All they had was a guard and a tackle to that side because it was unbalanced left. Guard pulls, kick out with a fullback, real nice spin. Picking up the extra yard or two by this phenomenal running back, Singleton, for Mifflin. Five carries, 19 yards early on. Grillo stays out there, top of your screen, along with Martin. And over set again to the left. Trap. And Strausser and Strausser will drag the pile down to the 25-yard line. A four-yard gain that time. That'll bring up second and six. Early on, as the rain starts to drop a little bit, early on, Mifflin has shown they're not afraid to go weak side. They've done it often here, including against the unbalanced line. They'll go to the two, two call, which is going to keep Pine Richland's defense, going to really force them to stay balanced and focused. Go quick hitter again with Strausser, and he's over the 25 down to the 22-yard line. Number Connor, Lentz, number Connor Lentz is in there again. Just with Mifflin having a threat to go weak side, it forces the defense to honor the width of the football field. Mifflin just taking their time methodically, trying to get up two scores here in the first quarter of the state semifinal. Singleton and Marinac in the shotgun set. They motion Martin. They will hand it off Singleton. Right side plows through the defensive effort of Schweiger and Miller. And another great run by Singleton here early on. Another first down for Governor Mifflin. Mifflin lining up and trying to play physical football against the WPIL powerhouse in 5A. They're trying to say, hey, we can line up and play this physical style too. Can they do it for four quarters remains to be seen. But early on, Mifflin looks like they definitely belong here. Slot eye. Marinac. Keep it on the ground this time with Trey Rock. Got a little old school fullback read, option potential, under center. Saw some of that last night. A lot of under center from Jersey Shore in their upset, in their vi big victory over Lampeter Strasburg, 39-35 in the 3A semi. Excuse me, the 4A semi. Unbalanced to the left. Merinak will keep. Merinak's got space. And they go weak side again, Eric. They go to the two... Call the guard and the tackle side away from the overload. Interesting. Asley has the stop for Pine Richland. As we see it again here, they're going to go weak side, fake the dive. Quarterback keeps, gets inside the five. First and goal. Mifflin trying to go up two touchdowns. Trying to send a shockwave through this. PIAA bracket here early on. Eric Kasparovitz and Pine Richland have to burn a timeout here to just try to catch their heads and keep things going. You're watching live coverage of the PIAA semifinals on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash PIAA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Pennsylvania high school playoff action. Now, nope. Mifflin's coach, Coach Lang, right? Yep. He was a longtime assistant under the previous previous coach and got some a chance to be a actually a the the head coach for a while while the former head coach was out with some health issues. Yep, Nick Vecchio. Yep, Vecchio has been there was there for a really long time, and and so Lang's been a mainstay at Governor Mifflin. He knows the program. He's continued to keep this program rolling and taking it to almost new heights. They had a phenomenal team several years ago with. Jan Johnson as their big linebacker quarterback, went on to play at Penn State, was a two-time state champion wrestler, wrestled at Penn State for a year when he needed a heavyweight. And uh, Governor Mifflin had a really good squad that year, and this year they're looking to even surpass that. I remember that this Governor Mifflin team knocked out, for those of you who follow Penn, uh, Pennsylvania high school football, they knocked out Harrisburg when Harrisburg had Micah Parsons 
Carson's senior year, they slammed the door shut on the Cougars and what they thought was the state championship run cut short. Singleton to carry, Singleton through traffic, Singleton spins and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Four yard run by Nick Singleton, my goodness. Something brewing here at Holidaysburg High School early on. It is 13-0 Governor Mifflin. Really like, like the way this quarterback for Mifflin just runs the offense. Marinak, not that he throws a whole lot, throws when necessary, but just runs the offense, has a big time running back, extra point through, and it's going to be 14-0 Mifflin here in the first. Shockwaves here at Holidaysburg High School. Take a look at the touchdown again. Singleton, the four-yard run. Nothing fancy again. They just line up and run what they run. You see that pad level and the shoulder, the push through those tacklers. Singleton's got the full package. And if you're Pine Richland, you just you have to eliminate turnovers. Turnovers are such a huge part of football at any level. And Governor Mifflin has capitalized on two early ones today. Yeah, fumble on the last drive. First possession for Pine Richland. The first play of the ball game from scrimmage. Cameron Stewart tipped the pass, and it was intercepted by Mason Clare. And that set up the first touchdown run by Strasser. One yard. And then the fumble recovered by Trey Rock. Along with Kate Schweger. Looks like Jan Johnson's going to be our halftime guest. How about that? Yeah, saw so him floating around down there before the game. And good job by Bruce Badgley. We'll have him on at halftime. Penn State's so well known for its wrestling program late as of late. When Jan was in his early going at Penn State, the wrestling coach went to the football coach and said, hey, we, we need a heavyweight wrestler. We have some injuries, whatnot. Jan Johnson, I know he's a scholarship football player, but he's a two-time state champ in wrestling in high school in Pennsylvania. We really need him, and Jan Johnson stepped up and filled the bill. Again, a squib kick. That is going to sail over the return man's heads, and Schweiger is going to be there to pick it up, and he will go nowhere. Cut down shy of the 20-yard line. Nate Goodman, Trey Rock, and others in there for Governor Mifflin, Alonzo Anderson as well. Pine Richland will start deep in its own territory. Ball took a great hop if you're Governor Mifflin. Here's a great example, a very good example for return men, especially on the kickoff where it's a live ball. If you're the return man at the other side, Eric, you have to anticipate that there's going to be, the ball's going to get through the legs of the guy beside you or it's going to go over his head as it did there, just in case. So Pine Richland from its own 19. Spencer trying to get this offense on track. They looked good before the fumble on the last drive and then just coughed it up. Governor Mifflin made him pay. Again, a quick throw near side to Mill, and it's incomplete. It looks like the majority of this offense for Pine Richland is not just spread, but it's spread without a tight slot, spread without a tight end, and all the receivers so far have been wide, occasionally lining up with one back in the backfield. Rain falls a little heavier here at Holidaysburg High School. Just as I say that, we have two backs in the backfield with the quarterback. <laughs> Spencer, Eastburn the carry. There is nothing in the middle there. Claire and Goodman are there right away. Sort of gave that running play away. It's going to bring up a third and ten. And now they're going to a five-wide set. Look for Mifflin, look for Mifflin to, to rush five and drop six into coverage. Spencer on third down, gonna sling it far side. Pass is intercepted on the far side by Suber. Third turnover in the first quarter by Pine Richland and Suber takes that all the way inside the 25 and Governor Mifflin is in business yet again. Wow, Mifflin ended up bringing six, which means they're straight man across the board and they lost a guy. The defenders looked like they were going to switch on that man to the weak side, but the ball went to the strong side and opportunistic defensive play by the Governor Mifflin defense. Pine Richland had a, the outside receiver coming across the middle wide open to that weak side. 
quarterback was unable to locate him. Why? Because there was pressure. When you bring six and there are only five to block, somebody's going to come free, as happened there, and the quarterback had to unload it. So Marinak will come back out with his Governor Mifflin offense, successful converting two Pine Richland turnovers already. Double tight set, first time we've seen it today. Double tight flanker, eye backs. Get a whistle here and a timeout called by Governor Mifflin. Time to remind you that today's game is also available for all subscribers via our mobile website. Log on to NFHSnetwork.com from your smartphone or tablet and view live games or replays from anywhere. Today's game also powered by Brute Athletic Apparel. Brute specializes in sublimated sports apparel that will make you stand out in a crowd or on the field. Brute's uniforms are made in the USA right in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. Visit BruteProShop.com to shop our current selections. Well, three turnovers, uncharacteristic of this Pine Richland team. We talked about it in the pregame uh, run up to this game. They were very careful with the ball all season long, only eight turnovers all season. And here in the first nine minutes, almost nine minutes, they've turned it over three times. And, and part of that's level of competition. I don't, I would doubt that Pine Richland, I'm not saying they took Governor Mifflin lightly or taking this game easily. Heck, it's the state semifinal. However, when you, when you look at this Governor Mifflin, some of these skill kids, they're athletic and, and they're making plays. This is, to say the least, shocking here early on. Not that Mifflin is winning this game, but again, just the, Con the dominance and yep, the control. Total control of this first quarter. Not to mention Mifflin. I talked about the intangible before the game, Eric. Confidence. The confidence level is arising, and that is important for a team that comes in as an underdog. And they got off to a fast start after a two-week layover as Strasser Fumble. lost the football, and Pine Richland gets the break they needed. Strausser threw the pile, and Schweiger came up with it for the Rams. That's the first turnover for Governor Mifflin. And Pine Richland finally, with 3.33 to go in this first quarter, gets a break. Now let's see if that can springboard some momentum switch. As we still have this light drizzle coming down at Holidaysburg Football Stadium. But with the turf field, it shouldn't be a major as long as it doesn't get any harder than this, it shouldn't really affect play too much. Look at the wide trips, super spread trips here to the wide side of field. Tight end for the first time in the game. Spencer will put it in the air again. Near side, he's got his man, Yo Kim, running underneath of it, tiptoes and stays in bounds for a big reception for Eli Yo Kim and a much needed first down for Pine Richland. Watch the receivers cross here. They got a quick motion and they cross and see what they do defensively. Well, there they have it. You lost sight of your middle receiver. Ended up acting like he was going to run inside. He went on the flag route wide open. Keep it on the ground here with Eastburn. And he will get maybe a yard that time. Trey Rock got hands on him. As well as that Stewart's in on that too. That Stewart on the corner. He can really make wreak havoc out there. Can't go by that. You got, cannot listen to voice. You got to look at the ball movement. Encroachment. It's against Mifflin, so that'll bring up second down and about four for Pine Richland. Such a subtle thing that many offenses do, even though they're in shotgun. The quarterback, his voice inflection, even his body movement a little bit can entice the defense to come off. Here's a tight bunch trips look to the wide side. Tight end backside. Now the tight end's going to go to an unbalanced set. And they're going to go that way almost nine times out of ten. Spencer, hands right off. up the middle. Eastburn, a lot of space. Eastburn trying to get out of the arm tackle of Anderson, and he drags him inside the 20-yard line. Anderson trying to punch that ball out, and Eastburn was able to carry the load, set up a nice another first down run here for Pine Richland. Take a look at it here. Straight up the middle. Big, quick hitter. Spencer lobbing that to the end zone and overshoots his intended receiver, Yo Kim. Good coverage there defensively. Three receivers to one side. Third guy came flying across the 
to the post. Ball slightly overthrown. So they go to a double slot set. Nearly jumped again, did Mifflin. They caught themselves and didn't cross the neutral zone. Spencer is five of eight early on here for 51 yards, but two picks. Quick throw to the far side for Yo Kim, and he is rocked over on that far side. Inside receiver going quickly outside. Throwing immediately the outside receivers blocking downfield. You got to be careful you don't initiate, you don't block before the ball's caught because the ball was caught in front of the line of scrimmage. That would be offensive pass interference. Nick Singleton who had to stop that time. And it'll bring up third down and seven here from the 15. Pressure coming. Spencer scrambling, throws off his back foot, passes tipped out of the hands of his intended receiver, Jeremiah Hasley, as Zach Parsons had the coverage that time for Governor Mifflin. That'll bring up fourth down. Great play defensively by Mifflin. Playing through the ball. Aiden Martin, I beg your pardon. Yes, Martin. Yeah. Fourth down and seven, and Pine Richland's offense stays on the field. No surprise here, down 14 nothing. When you're playing a man def as a man defender, Eric, and the ball, you don't have to necessarily play the ball, but you play through the man as the ball reaches him with your hands and stripping it. Great play there again by Martin. Spencer pumps, throws, lobs that one to nobody. Great coverage in the secondary by that Mifflin defense. Anderson on the near side along with Suber. They cut off the routes. They force the turnover on downs, and Mifflin takes back over. Not easy to do with that bunch trips look when you have crossers knowing who to go, which, as you're a defender, which guy do I go with? Do I stick to my man? Do we switch? Do we play more of a zone look to that? And that Pine Ridge on offense could really put a defense into, in major stress points, but phenomenal job there by the defense. Governor Mifflin bending but not breaking and keeping the zero on the scoreboard. It's been the worst starting field position for Mifflin here in the first quarter. Here's your double tight set again with a flanker, eye backs. On their own 10, they pitch it to Singleton. Singleton trying to find room, and he'll gain two, maybe three that time. And Luke Miller had to stop for Pine Richland as the clock ticks down to 140 here in the first. Even though it's a three-yard gain, Eric, two-and-a-half to three-yard gain, you do that again, you're putting yourself in a you know a third and four, third and three and a half manageable down and distance to move the chains. And one of those you're hoping Singleton can break a tackle and, and get extra yardage. Second down, eight for Mifflin. They hand it off, get on the trap to Strausser. And he gains a short one yard. Just a quick dive play to the right. No guards pull there. Moryanka. Very good defensive play there. Yep, Warjanka, the middle linebacker, Zach Warjanka, comes up with a stop. That's how you do it defensively at the linebacker position. You play right down the line of scrimmage, fullback gets the ball, you have that gap, come up and make a really good tackle, drive your feet, and give up one yard. It's third and what, about six, Eric? They're down in six from the 19. Strausser is out. They bring back Tyler Minnick. He's to the top of your screen. Grillo and Martin... And Stewart, lower half of your screen. Myronak will unload it. Going to throw deep, looking for Grillo. He underthrew him, but Grillo waits for the catch, and he makes it in Pine Richland territory to the Rams' 45-yard line. It looked like Pine Richland was looking for number 12 to do the that deep comeback that he did earlier, and he stutter-stepped and went right by him. Went with a... Outside deep ball, inside receiver went about 8 to 10 yards and out. That was covered, so he goes for the home run. Like you said, underthrown slightly. That's going to be the end of the quarter. Governor Mifflin, three Pine Richland turnovers. They convert that into 14 points. They're knocking on the door once again. They got a 14-0 lead after one. You're watching the PIAA Class 5A semifinals on the NFHS Network. Ever wish there was a sports app just for you? Introducing Small Player Big Play app, the all sports social media app for young athletes. Live stream events for your friends and family who can't be there. 
at home or at work. They can watch your streaming on their phones or on TV by using a mirroring device or AirPlay 2. Download the app from the App Store or Google Play and create an account using a valid email address. That's it. Now you can find friends, join groups, or make new ones. You can upload and watch your own content for free. Watch YouTube uploads for free. Even more streaming options are available with our subscription plans and in-app purchases. Download the app and start sharing with the world your passion for sports today. Start of the second quarter here at Tiger Stadium. Eric Thomas and Fort Chapman. Bruce Badgley down on the sideline. It is 14 to nothing. Governor Mifflin after three PR turnovers in the first quarter. And they get a, a turnover on downs near the end of the first quarter. So they are driving here. That big pass from Merrinac to Suber to get them to the 46 of Pine Richland as the quarter closed. And everything working for Governor Mifflin here in this first quarter. And they're knocking on the door here once again. First down and 10 for the Mustangs. We swap ends here. And they will keep it on the ground. That fullback is such a quick hitter, and you have the threat of option. And the last part of that option is that quarterback pitching the ball to the stud running back. That time he got a fullback, got a big seven yard gain. It's not easy to stop. And although Pine Richland's played the, the fullback dive pretty well so far, Mifflin's not going to get away from it, Eric. Trey Rock, the carry that time. Alonzo Anderson, the corner for Mifflin, being looked at on the sideline. He was a little shaken up after the last defensive series. Pitch to Singleton. Singleton trying to find room. Crunches into the defender across the 35 to the 34, 33-yard line. Six-yard gain, a first down for Governor Mifflin. Another end over set. The tight end was to the same side. He's ineligible, but they're not throwing it to him anyway. There was a loose slot, then a tight end. Only two offensive linemen to the weak side. They went toss. Very nice cut up by Singleton. St. Joe's Prep is in control of the 6A semifinal on one end. As Merrinack will keep pitch to Singleton. Singleton ahead of steam and a great job by Schweiger to trip him up just at the nick of time to save what probably would have been a touchdown run. Nice read by Merrinack. Get a little bit of Oklahoma old school option just out of the eye, not the wishbone. Well done. Really better off if I'd have said Nebraska back in their heyday under Tom Osborne. They would run a lot of option from the eye. Very difficult to stop, especially when you have an IM hip at tailback or a Mike Rozier at tailback. And sure enough, Governor Mifflin has a stud at tailback. Singleton is all that. Yep, he'll get the carry Counter. here again, trying to find room. Gets out of one tackler, trying to angle himself towards the pylon. And then Hasley is there to wrap him up and throw him out of bounds. But another first down for Mifflin. It'll be first and goal with 10.20 to go in the first half. First time we saw it go, go weak side, they went counter play back. So everything was going flow. Even when they ran weak side, they was all flow to weak side. This time it was a, acted like they were going to strength. They come back with a counter to the tailback. Good blocking up front. And Mifflin is within seven yards of going up three touchdowns. End over set. Pitch to Singleton, why not? And Pine Richland's able to converge this time. Warniak, or uh, Luke Miller, and Warianka were in there on the stop. Second and goal. You know, the uh, uh, at some point in this game, Mifflin was probably going to have to they're not a chunk play offense. They've been able to do it at times this season, but at some point you knew they were probably going to have to get one yeah. and get themselves out of deep field position. Now they can just kind of control everything with their tempo. Oh, they weren't set. They weren't set. Yeah. That was actually a tackle over set to the left, tight end lined up to the right where the tackle is. They were going to go weak side on the toss. A bad mistake there for Mifflin not getting set. Sometimes when you go on those early counts, that can happen, Eric. But every time, you know, Pine Richland thinks they have him back in their own territory, and then they go 
deep, and Grillo makes the big catch. They're able to get half the field taken away there, and they are just able to run their own yep. style of offense and their tempo, and that's been the big theme here in the first half. It's Strasser right up the middle, and he could have walked in the end zone for the touchdown. This is what Mifflin had a little bit of a different offensive set. It's what they did to Harrisburg a few years ago. They can... You're looking for this play, that play, all of a sudden, boom, fullback up the middle on the quick hitter. That hole a little deeper now for Pine Richland. Strausser's second touchdown of the afternoon. This time from 11 yards out. Jackson schools to try the point after. Great execution by this Mifflin offense. And schools point after will flop over the crossbar. 21 to nothing. Governor Mifflin is in control of this semifinal with Pine Richland here from Hollidaysburg High School. Today's game brought to you in part by Alvernia University and Reading College Town. Be part of the future and enroll in one of our new three, our three new engineering majors or enhanced business and communication programs. Join the pack. The Golden Wolves boast one of the largest athletic departments in Division Three, with the addition of men's and women's ice hockey, men's and women's wrestling, and esports. Learn more at alvernia.edu. Take a look at the touchdown here. Strausser is second of the afternoon. Yep, trap play, right? Trap left, they open up opposite, open up to the right, right guard pulls. The old trap play you used to see from the Franco Harris days at the Pittsburgh Steelers. You don't see much trapping in the NFL anymore, but you used to see it then. And it's a sort of like a sucker play where you're not blocking the down lineman to one side of the center. And if he comes up field too far, he's going to get picked off by a pulling lineman coming from the opposite direction. And the fullback goes right, right off the trap block. Beautiful play, greatly executed. Mifflin goes up, three touchdowns. For this is a Pine Richland team that many think is the best public school in the state of Pennsylvania. They think they can hang with St. Joe's Prep, who, by the way, is going to go back to defend their title in Hershey as they're blowing out Satterton right now. But what do you tell your kids if you're Eric Asperovitz? I mean, this is 21 nothing. You haven't been pushed like this all season long. Everything's been so easy for this team. You're yep. in a, a site that you're not used to. You're not in your home confines or, Good point. you know, at another a Whitfield squib. Stadium. It's another squib kick. And fielded by Andrew Mellis. Eric, it's an easy answer. It's not easy to do, but it's an easy answer. Stick to the plan. Keep your poise. Don't come unglued. There's tons of football left. And as you say that, you got to say another one. Hold on to the football. Execute and hold on to the football. We cannot afford another turnover. And we have to run our plan. There, need to use those, get those crossers and somehow try to find some kind of running game because right now, Pine Richland, barring that one running play, they're, they're one-dimensional up front. It's pass and almost pass all the way. Spencer's had interceptions. They fumbled the football. They've turned it over on downs. They can't get any momentum offensively as Eastburn maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. An example there, number 13, he's defensively, Parsons, he comes unblocked because he's coming off that tackle edge. You don't have a tight end to either side, and you got five guys up close on the line of scrimmage for Mifflin. Spencer, quick throw near side for Gokis. And he is close to the first down, eh, about a yard shy of it. Nine-yard gain that time. No tight end still. There's, now there are two running backs in the backfield with the quarterback. Spencer. Same play. Throw. Yep, go kiss. We'll catch this one into Governor Mifflin territory, a first down for Pine Richland. Once again, jammed up the box. You hear it all the time at the college level. The box is getting jammed up. Mifflin's putting... A lot of people in there, what happens? They're going to throw the ball to the hitch on the outside. Still eight-man box. Why is there an eight-man box? Because two running backs in the backfield for Pine Richard, which also opens up the passing lanes on the outside. Spencer hands off Eastburn. Nothing there as he is swallowed up almost immediately. This big Governor Mifflin defensive line has just been tremendous here early on. Dylan Cole had the stop that time. Oh 
Spencer will throw, pass to the far side. Hasley has it. Martin, good job to wrap him up, but Hasley will fight forward for what he can get. He's a little shy that first down. As you see man-to-man -man there, defensively, it's loose man. So they're just going to keep picking that apart with the short stuff. Option. Fumble. It fumbled again, but Eastburn's able to pounce on it, but they'll lose yardage, and that'll bring up fourth down. Probably going to go for it here, down three, three scores, because you're in decent territory. Although you don't get it, you're giving Mifflin a short field. It's a loss of three on the fumble. The running back never really had possession of that pitch. And almost flinching up front. Like Goodman that time for Governor Mifflin. Spencer out of the shotgun here on fourth down. Screen. Dumps it off far side. Nice catch by Charlie He's Mill. And Charlie Mill is down the sideline, and Charlie Mill will not be caught. Touchdown, Pine Richland on fourth down. They convert it 40 yards, and the Rams finally break through offensively in this game. Very nicely executed play. Wide receiver screen on the outside. He's got... He has his other receiver to block for him, and also the lineman got downfield to cut some people off as Pine Richland takes a huge fourth down play to pay dirt. Very necessary as well. Morianka. Actually, it's the other kicker for Pine Richland. That is number 82, Tony uh, Nicasio. But that, that touchdown absolutely needed by this offense to generate some kind of momentum. And Charlie Mill, Eli Kim gets a lot of the, the praise, and rightfully so, but it's been Charlie Mill early on who's matched him in terms of catches. Take a look at the touchdown here again. This, again, is on fourth down. It's a good route, good blocking downfield, and Pine Richland finally... Look at the linemen. Get all three linemen get down there. Center, guard, and tackle. Phenomenal job. You can go downfield as lineman when the ball is being thrown because it's being as a screen pass, meaning the ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage. So there are no ineligible receivers downfield. And what happened there, the number two, there were two receivers to that side. The second receiver. If we can see that again here, watch the second receiver to the left. He's going to block the guy covering the man getting the ball. And then the, the guy covering the second receiver is not coming up quickly enough. He reacts late, and the linemen get on him, and he's gone. Very, very well-executed screen pass. That's how you do the quick wide receiver screens. They got to feel like they just got a big weight lifted off their shoulders because not only do they survive a potential turnover there again, they get seven. Absolutely. Fortunately for Pine Richland, that third down fumble on the pitch was right near the sidelines. Nicasio will kick it away. First time Pine Richland's had to kick it off tonight, this afternoon rather. Martin, Singleton, and Suber are the return men for Governor Mifflin. End of run up in the air is going to be returnable by Martin. Martin found a block. Martin, a nice return up to the 30. Still going. Here comes him. Oh. And he got loose. There is a flag down. Back at the 25-yard line. Nice return by Martin, but we'll check the flag. Looks like this might be coming back. It's Martin's a football player. Both sides of the ball, too, including special teams. They might have gotten a block in the back. We'll see here. Actually, this may be against Pine Richland. This might be a face mask. It's a hold, actually, at Governor Mifflin. Thought I saw Martin get twisted around in that pile. A nice effort, but that's going to get negated here. And, and here's the thing. It, here's the thing that hurts Mifflin. They're with their offense. They're not the big spread type team that's going to throw the ball down the field as much. So you get the ball all the way out close to midfield, and it's all negated with a special teams penalty. Now you got to go. You're your own twenty. You got to get eighty yards to pay dirt. Yeah, penalty does take the ball back to the 20. It was thrown at the 30, so 10 yards from the spot. Erniak under center. They have been red hot offensively. Singleton. Singleton tries to cut back, and we'll just run right into the teeth of that Pine Richland defense. Gained two that time. Not easy to see a lot of yardage when you toss the ball 
away from the tight end there with a loose slot. You have a guard and tackle to that side and a fullback lead blocking, backside guard pulling. You're not always going to get a lot of room, and Pine Richland defended that well. I think at some point soon we're going to see that option look, fake into the fullback, and get that quarterback on the corner with that pitch option. Here it is. Yep. Mariniak will pitch it to Singleton, and we get... Yep. Was knocked out of bounds by Schweiger over on the far side, but got one only. So good stop that time by Schweiger, and this will put Mifflin in third and seven here. Mifflin has been really good throughout the season, sprinting to the wide side and throwing that comeback route. They threw the long ball that was underthrown but caught for a big gain. The end of the first quarter. They're not going to, out of the shotgun. Will put it in the air. Pressure coming. Scrambles out of it. Lofts it down the field. That one's going to be intercepted. Schweiger running underneath of it. They double covered Stewart. Schweiger takes off and runs. And he's tackled just around the 20 yard line. So huge, huge momentum swing for Pine Richland here with 6.46 to go as they'll have it in plus territory. The first turnover of the afternoon for the Mustangs. When you throw a ball late, not on rhythm. You do not want to throw the ball up for grabs in most cases, especially into the teeth of the defense. There were two defenders there for Pine Richland. The offensive receiver was not in position to even deflect the ball or bat it down to avoid the interception. And now, as you mentioned, Eric, that old Captain Mo momentum has struck for the team from Western Pennsylvania, the team that came in with a ton of confidence and now got their confidence shook a little bit going down 21 nothing now they believe again and they come out in a two back set spencer will put it in the air throws near side that one hops into his receiver's hands incomplete it was gokis on the attempt second down 10. look to be a run pass option there and if there's only going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage out there, you throw the hitch, and that's what the signal caller Spencer's doing for Pine Richland. Same set again. He's got Tristan Taylor. Check that. Jordan Burns in the backfield with him. And Spencer will keep. He got popped right away by Trey Rock, and then he was able to get down to the 20, maybe just inside the 20 and the 19 for a two-yard pickup. It's a catch-22 here defensively. Mifflin's putting a lot of guys in the box. They're attacking the running plays, including that one by the quarterback on a, on a running option to the left. But now when you do that, Eric, you're leaving a lot of one-on-one -on -one openings outside. Empty set, shotgun, four-down territory for the Rams. Spencer throws off his back foot, back across his body, and go kisses there to make the catch and a big first down for Pine Richland with 6.05 to go here in the second. It's usually a dangerous throw for a quarterback to make back across his body, not only that, but off his back foot, but Spencer connects that time. And all the way into the end zone. Nobody around him is Eastburn for the touchdown. And just like that, Pine Richland is back in this ball game. Well-executed running play to the weak side. Almost went untouched. And they're an extra point away from being down seven all of a sudden from 21-0 to what looks to be 21-14. Spencer holds. They bobbled that. Spencer going to throw off his back foot to the back corner, and it's out of bounds. So the point after fails. And it'll stay at 21-13 with 5.51 to go here in the first half. Who knows, Eric, how much the weather had to do with that hold, but these are crucial. Those extra points, we saw one last night. It, it ended up not costing Jersey Shore the football game, but their kicking game had been suspect all year. And one of the, the MVP of the game for his offensive and defensive performance missed one of those extra points, which put them behind the eight ball for a while. And stay tuned for tonight's player of the game. Coming up afterwards, we'll hear from 
a player of the game. They'll receive a small player, a big play, a custom hoodie from Brute Athletic Apparel. Visit BruteProShop.com to find amazing apparel made locally in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. This afternoon's broadcast is powered by Brute Athletic Apparel. Eric Thomas and Fort Chapman with you here at Hollidaysburg High School. Tiger Stadium, where we got the 5A semifinal. What looked like a route early on for Governor Mifflin. Three Pine Richland turnovers has turned into a pretty good ball game here in the second quarter. Let's go to a quick little coaching point. The kickoff team for Pine Richland is still in the huddle with their, with their special teams coach. He's looking down to see where the stud is for Governor Mifflin, where he's lined up. And where is he's lined up over here on the side by the Governor Mifflin sideline. So... That being the case for Singleton, they're going to kick it away from Singleton, obviously. Remember, you used to see sometimes with Rocket Ismith, some of these other guys, they line up and then they'll switch right at the last moment. That's something Governor Mifflin may want to consider, switching sides once they see where the star returner is. Nicasio will boot it away. He and Yanka have flip-flop duties kicking this season, but it's... Nicasio here this afternoon as Martin will get the return. Martin and shed one tackler. And lost the football again, and Pine Richland's able to pounce on it again. Three turnovers apiece for these the other two way. teams. Wow. Unbelievable. Never seen anything like this before, these momentum swings like this. Three turnovers one way, three the other way. We're still got, we still got 5.42 to go here in the second. This and we're talking, you asked James. me what you would say if you're Pine Richland's coach when they were down three scores, and it was stick to the game plan and, don't, and protect the football. Governor Mifflin's now forgetting to protect the football. Spencer, a chance to tie it here for Pine Richland. Who would have thunk that about 15 minutes ago? As he will quick throw to the far side, pass is caught over on the far side. That is Mill, who has the catch. He's a little slow to get up. Anderson. And Alonzo Anderson is down again. So remember, he was shaken up earlier in the game. And he is unable to get up after that contact. Anderson came up and made a real quick hit on the reception. Kept it to a three and a half, four yard gain. And, you know, I'm waiting to see. They keep going for the quick play-action hitch, play-action hitch. Pine Richland does. When is a Governor Mifflin defensive back going to gamble? And can they go hitch and go and run by? Of course they can. But you gamble and you read it right and you pick that ball off, it's, you're off to Pater. You can go 80, 70, 80 yards for the touchdown the other way. That's why it's so important that a quarterback throwing the quick game throws on rhythm and doesn't give things away by pre-snap looks, etc. They are over at Altoona. The 6A semifinal, Central York and McDowell are still tied at 14 apiece. That is the last update we have from that game. We got a, got a halftime score for you. Bishop Guilfoyle, seven, steel high, nothing. The Rollers have turned it over four times, including a scoop and score for Guilfoyle on the first play of the game. And two steel high turnovers were in the red zone. One was an interception inside the 10. That information coming from Rob Pugliese. I'd like to have him here as a spotter today. Holy cow, that yeah, would have helped. That would, that would be nice. Central York has taken a 21-14 lead, by the way, over McDowell. That is 21 unanswered points for Central York. And uh, they will play, if they, the winner of that game, will play St. Joe's Prep in the 6A championship game. The schedule for next week's a little quirky. They're not sure what they're going to do with all the games uh, as they were originally scheduled. The 5A game was scheduled to be the Friday night game, especially if it was going to be Pine Richland and Erie Prep, which it still could be. They've thought about possibly moving times, but we'll see what happens. Uh, geographically, they're going to try to do what they can to get some of those Pittsburgh teams since it's such a crunched situation next week. And usually we have three, two games over three days apiece. And this season they're opting to go with two games, for our three games Friday, three games Saturday to get the weekend and the season over with as fast as possible. So there might be some jockeying time-wise next week. Looks like an upper arm, left arm injury by for Anderson. Hopefully it's not too serious. 
but it looks like it may be. They're taking him into the locker room, over here to the table. They're putting him on the table here to reevaluate. But that's going to be another defensive back has to come into the game for the, the spread team of Pine Richland. And remember, Eden Johnson, the transfer, we talked about that in the pregame show, already out for screen. Mifflin. They will run screen. Mill, the catch. Mill tried to shed a tackle. And it's taken down around the 18-yard line. So a five-yard game will bring up third down and two. So scary defensively when a team runs a, these quick wide receiver screens against you. Another Mifflin player is down right now. But when they run these screens, you want to get pressure. Everybody's saying pressure the quarterback, pressure the quarterback. Well, the more people you send to get the quarterback, those players almost definitely can't get to, the, to cover, the, to play the screen. And then you have offensive linemen blocking downfield on linebackers and D-backs, and they can be some really, really fabulous offensive plays for the screen team, as Pine Richland has shown here, one for a touchdown. Can't tell who the injured player is because we're – Screened out, he's on his back. But they're starting to fall here for Mifflin, and that is not a good sign. Anderson has started a corner nearly all season long. He and Wes Grillo started a corner, but Eden Johnson, we mentioned, has been out transferred after his sophomore year, so he was unable to play in the playoffs this season. And uh, the 5'11 junior replaced by Greg Suber, so already there's a crunch on personnel in the secondary and they really can ill afford to lose anybody else defensively here especially with their backs up against it now this was a 21 nothing game central york has gone up two scores 27 14 over erie mcdowell with a minute to go in the half central york star quarterback he's a junior Bo Perbula allegedly making things happen in that game. One of my college teammates just is at the game. He sent me a text just now that said, and we played with Perbula's dad at Shippensburg. He said, Perbula is no joke. And no, he's not. Heck of a football player. His older brother, Cade, is a, quarter, is a quarterback at University of Delaware. Yeah, St. Joe's prep, by the way, that game has gone to the fourth already. It's 51-28. St. Joe's prep. Kyle McCord had six first half touchdown passes. He's going to Ohio State. And again, if you follow high school football in this state, he is the top quarterback and trying to get back to Hershey. Remember last year, he did not play during the playoff run due to a knee injury. So he missed the whole repeat. He is back to try to win a second title as the starting quarterback for St. Joe's prep, and they're going to be on their way to Hershey to do just that, and we'll see who they play next week. And we got some other issues here with this injury on the field as we're having a medic come out, and they're bringing the ambulance on the field here, too, for the injured Governor Mifflin player. Do see a little bit of movement there, so that's a good sign. Bring me the ambulance out here. Still can't tell who the injured player is. What a just a, a awkward game here with the all the momentum on Governor Mifflin's side early in this game. The three turnovers, the three touchdowns are up twenty-one nothing. They turn it over three times. They've had a couple of injuries now. Now this one looks to be a little bit more severe than the others, but this game has taken so many twists and turns. And, you know, we, we talked about it at the, in the first quarter, just the emotion that these teams go through in these big swings, and you don't want to burn all that early in games. And, you know, when the other team settles in, what happens at that point? Everything kind of has taken – a turn here in this one. Absolutely. You got, as much credit as you got to give to Governor Mifflin for coming out and setting the stage of this football game, going above and beyond expectations. You got to give a lot of credit to this Pine Richland squad who stayed together, stayed poised, and executed, especially on that first score with the fourth down screen pass to sort of open the floodgates here.
just a shame to see these type of injuries we have yeah this is an unfortunate turn here not sure if Alonzo Anderson wide receiver DB number four is going to be able to get back in the game with a left arm injury that remains to be seen and then just moments later still don't know who this is for Governor Mifflin as they bring the stretcher out. It's now 51-34 St. Joe's prep. There's about three minutes and 49 seconds to go in that semifinal. Satterton doing most of its damage against the second team of St. Joe's prep. He's got another touchdown to Satterton, so it's 51-36. Jeff Lang, the head coach of Governor Mifflin, is out talking to the officials here as they attend to the injured player. Hate to see this under any circumstance, especially given how well Governor Mifflin has played here in this semifinals. This game has come to a screeching halt here. Just hope that this injury is not these are just precautionary measure, measures, hopefully. Central York still has a 27-14 lead on McDowell. That game is late in the second quarter, 114 to go over at Mansion Park. Well, they are loading the player onto the stretcher. Find out from, if we can, from Bruce Badgley, who the injured player is for Mifflin. Pine Ridge and sideline gets up, starts to warm up here. It looks like at least from a number standpoint that Zach Parsons is not right now in the huddle. So I speculate that that might be who the player is. So I do not see him on the sideline, nor do I see him in the player mix that is off to our right here. So be a starting linebacker for this Governor Mifflin team. It's tough to tell, but I, I do not see Zach Parsons there, so hopefully it's not as serious as this looks, but unfortunate situation here for Governor Mifflin and all the momentum that they had in this game. And let's see when they can restart things here is they have the player loaded up. They move the ambulance down towards the area where the injured player is, and they are rolling him off the field. Send the team over to give him well wishes as they roll the stretcher off the field. We'll get back underway here. Tough spot to be in if you're Governor Mifflin. I mean, this is this has been the most awkward of first halves here, with 
all the momentum swings and the scores and everything, and now you got to come back after that. One of your key players stretch it off. You're trying to stop this Pine Richland team. They're touchdown away and a two-point conversion away from tying this thing up after a 21-0 lead. They have the player loaded up in the ambulance. They'll get off the track, and then we'll restart things here with 5.03 to go in the first half. 21-13, Pine Richland trying to tie this game up. Uh, you just hate to see that. As Man. you said, Eric, hopefully he's okay. It is a tough situation. And it looks like Braylon Stewart is out there defensively for Governor Mifflin now, the 6'1 junior linebacker. And it looks like he is in the spot that Zach Parsons was. So until we get any kind of confirmation. I heard some of the fans yelling, Zach. I assume that's who it is. Stewart this season has seen some limited time. And it's, you know, you look at the other side of things here too, and obviously you, you concern is with the injured player, but you know, Pine Richland also had to stop as well. Stewart's appeared in six games this season, 19 tackles. So it's, it's a momentum stop for everybody involved here, but hopefully Governor Mifflin is able to Rebound and would start by getting a big stop here on what is third down and one. And coming up at halftime, we'll send things down to Bruce Badgley. He'll have a halftime report. Hopefully, we'll have Jan Johnson, the former standout with Governor Mifflin. Pine Richland is yet to break their huddle. Ambulance will roll off the field here off to our right. So the Rams will come back out on the field. The Mifflin defense is back out there, and we'll get things restarted here with 5.03 to go in the second quarter. Not sure why we still had a... And there we go, we got the restart now. Pine Richland breaks the sideline and they come back out on the field here quickly on third and one from the 17. Trying to tie this thing up late in the second quarter. Spencer right up the middle. Spencer will have the first down as he gets his way down to the 15 yard line. Two yard gain for Spencer. Pine Richland will keep the momentum here. Late in the second quarter, they go tempo again. Quick to the line, Spencer gonna throw it towards the end zone, Yo Kim, and he had it in and out of his hands. Coverage was there by Nick Singleton. Good coverage in that back corner as Yo Kim had it. Second down now as they bring back Gokis. Nice move to get around Singleton. Singleton made had good recovery there, but could have been a touchdown. Spencer. Yo Kim is in the slot, bottom of your screen. Snap, quick throw again. Yo Kim makes the catch. And he is wrapped up by Aiden Martin inside the 10. Seven yard gain that time. So third and three here for. Pine Richland would think it's probably four down territory again. As Spencer out of the shotgun will fake the handoff. Going to throw. Pass is knocked away. Good coverage again in the secondary for Mifflin. And that's going to force fourth down. We'll see what Pine Richland opts to do here. He did it again. He did it in the end zone on the other side of the field to break up a, a big play in the red zone. Aiden Martin, number 35 for Mifflin. Big momentum swing right here. A game in the balance, second quarter. The player, Martin was the player who fumbled that kickoff return on this drive. Yep, excellent point. That gave the ball to Pine Richland, and he made a big play there. Now it's going to be, what do they need, about four yards here. Fourth down and three from the eight. 
Spencer going to roll out. Comes back the other way. Throw back. It is there for the touchdown. Luke Miller. Eight-yard touchdown pass. And Pine Richland's a two-point try away from a tie game. Ball was put right on the money to the weeks. Back to the backside. All the flow goes right. Send a receiver delayed across the middle to the left. And he's in the end zone. Pine Richland's going to try for the two here, it looks like. Try to tie this game up. They're going to chase that point after they missed. Number five's ineligible. They're both on the ball. There's going to be a running play. Pass over the middle. This one's going to get thwarted. Cam Stewart, others are in there to stop. So Pine Richland unsuccessful on its last two tries. They tried that little pop screen with the back to the left coming across. The wide receiver to the right. There were two receivers to the right wide. The second one is ineligible. Usually you see a run on a play like that from motion. They tried a little quick hitting middle flip, basically shovel pass type deal. Let's take Good a look defense. At, take a look at the touchdown again. Beautiful throwback here by Spencer. And Miller just staying patient and staying with the play. Spencer bought enough time. Lobbed that one perfectly to Miller for the six. Good arm. Good arm strength going backwards like that to throw that ball accurately. So after all that, Governor Mifflin stays in front by two. And the main story of this first half, Eric, obviously, one word starts with a T, turnovers. Killed Pine Rich and early and now has killed Governor Mifflin as of late. Well, we just got to look at the, the injury here with Zach Parsons, and it's unfortunate what happened here. He ran into his own man as he was clocked by Trey Rock. As with his head down, yeah, with, with his, his head down. Converted there. in coverage there that time. We, we have a look at that from a different angle from down on the sideline. Bruce Badgley able to show us that. Just unfortunate play as Rock's trying to step in there and make a tackle on Charlie Mill, and he just ran right into his own player. So unfortunately, Zach Parsons, the injured player, is out. Martin has the return again this time, shy of the 30. So Governor Mifflin has 349, and they have two timeouts. Still a two-point lead. I mean, it's been the Nick Singleton show as we expected. Haven't seen Connor Marinak have to step up and make any big plays. He had that big third down pass to Suber, or to West Grillo, I beg your pardon. And we haven't really seen much out of him since that play. Singleton will be in the backfield. Two receivers, bottom of your screen. Martin's in the slot. Trap. And they'll go quick hitter, yep, as you mentioned, with Strausser. This is where Marinak, as the signal caller, he needs to get the offense together and say, everybody patient. Let's go. Let's put a drive together. Let's run our offense. And they hit. no better way to do it than get six yards on a quick trap left play with the right guard pulling. Still and off that, of off that trap, Eric's going to come this tailback. Looks like Alonzo Anderson is out of the game for Governor Mifflin. He's got his pads off and his shoulder wrapped up. Singleton, nice first down run. Carrying Luke Miller. Up to the 41-yard line, a seven-yard gain that time for Singleton, who's closing in on 100 yards here this afternoon. Just what Mifflin needed, move the chains and get some confidence back offensively, get some rhythm back. They didn't even get a chance to get on the field after that kickoff return, so Pine Richland, two offensive sets for two scores without Mifflin taking a snap. Unbalanced right, look for the toss right. Knows the fullback again, Strausser. Nothing, nothing there as... Or Yanka, big middle linebacker for Pine Richland to stop. That fullback is so close to the quarterback who's under center. It's just such a quick hitter. That time Pine Richland played it, played it well, giving up only two yards. Second, Plenty of time left on the play clock. Yep, second down and eight. Unbalanced again. 
Yep, here's where I'm expecting a toss pass. They will throw it. Singleton did this in the first game of the season, looking down the field. And what a catch made in traffic by Suber. Boy, he had the inside position on Mill, adjusted his body, and somehow came down with it. They did that against Wilson the first game of the season, second play of the year, and it was Singleton to Stewart in that game. They go right back to it here at the perfect time to get down to the Pine Richland 21-yard line. Perfect time is right. Great call. Unbalanced left. Here comes a toss. Oh, they're going fullback again. I apologize. They love this fullback quick hitter to the weak side off an unbalanced end over set. Korniak again the stop for Pine Richland. Strausser picked up three that time. He's got nine carries for 25 yards. Very workmanlike effort for Strausser. He also has a touchdown here in this first half. Mifflin trying to extend that two-point lead. They need some offensive momentum here. And they're looking for it late in this first half. Now hand it off to Strausser again. Boy, is he fighting his way down to the 10 yard line. Trying to make up for that fumble he had two series ago, one offensive series for them ago. And that's gonna put it first and goal. Yep, first down run for Strausser with 1.10 to go. Patient drive here by Mifflin. The trick play, the singleton pass down the field. Tackle over left again. Marniak will hand off to Strausser and he'll work his way inside the five down to the four, six yard run again. They're just gashing Pine Richland up front. It's such a quick hitting play on that dive. They got the option fake, so linebackers have to respect the option. Whoever's responsible for quarterback, the scraping linebacker comes up and makes a tackle, but this fullback is running so hard and so low to the ground and hitting it so quickly. The Singleton. fullback went the wrong way there, it looks like. And good defensive effort by Pine Richland that time. And Schweiger was able to step up and make the stop. Governor Mifflin's going to have to burn a timeout here with 23 seconds to go in the half. Strausser, if you watch the replay here, Strausser, the fullback, goes left. When the ball's going to the right, it was a miscue. He surely doesn't want to go opposite the toss. Every once in a while, you'll see a fullback go opposite to give a false cue for the linebackers, but not on a toss play. Now you got to think if you're Governor Mifflin here, you have timeouts left, so you're fine. So if you don't get in the end zone running the ball, you're okay. You can call another one. You're up two with this high-powered Pine Richland offense, which is now getting on track. You got to think you're in four-down territory, unless you would lose yardage here somehow. But you got two downs to get three yards. Jackson Schools, the kicker for Governor Mifflin, has no field goal attempts this season either. He's 37, perfect on, on point afters. He's now 40 of 40 this season, but no field goal attempts for Schools. And Mifflin, you got to think, too, for that Mifflin, given the fact that they are going to be without two starters defensively now, they got to get points. they got to get points almost every time Absolutely. they have an opportunity to. This might turn out to be a shootout. And they just have to hope to win a high-scoring game. And you got to think Pine Richland's going to line up in a goal line set, short yardage set, and just really attack inside and, and really bring the pressure looking for a run. Unbalanced line left, tackle over left, that is. Strausser, quick hitter. He's in the end zone for the touchdown. They went weak side again to the guard tight end side to the weak side. Governor Mifflin attacks the weak side very well when they go to this unbalanced tackle over left set. They go back to the right. Great. Well executed. Great execution yeah, there. Great answer by this Mifflin team. Strausser is second touchdown of the afternoon. Jackson schools to attempt a crucial point after. And that will keep this at a nine point lead. It'll be a two score game. And school's point after try is good.
19 seconds to go in the first half. Governor Mifflin extends its lead. It's now 28 to 19 here in the Class 5A semifinal. You're watching live coverage of the PIAA football semifinals on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash PIAA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Pennsylvania high school playoff action. Alongside Fort Chapman, I'm Eric Thomas, Bruce Badgley down on the sideline. And we got a good one here. A lot of swings in this first half, a lot of points in this first half. 28 to 19. Governor Mifflin in front of Pine Richland. Winner of this game will play Cathedral Prep in the 5A championship game next weekend at Hershey Park Stadium. And Governor Mifflin, if you joined us late, they've lost cornerback Alonzo Anderson, who is down in the field in a sling. They've lost linebacker Zach Parsons. And they had a 21-point lead, 21-0, and lost that lead. And they've somehow been able to string together a couple of key plays here late in the second quarter and keep a nine-point lead on the board. Yes, they have. It looks like Anderson is, has a left collarbone or separated shoulder type thing because he's in a sling, but he has ice on that area. And he was holding it as such when he came off the field after the injury. So he's not going to go back in. Central York in the 6A semifinal over at Mansion Park. 27 unanswered points. They have a 27-14 lead at halftime. And they will play if they hold on to that win. St. Joe's prep, fifth straight state championship game for the Hawks. 99% chance we get a squib here, Eric. Looking for their third straight there title. And they defeat Satterton 51-43. That game's going to look closer than what it was. That was an absolute rout in the first half, and St. Joe's Prep put their second string in as Schweiger on the return. I really like this Martin, Aiden Martin. He made a nice, did just a nice job on that kickoff. He's on the field almost all the time. Made a heck of a play there, just breaking down, being knowing there's only 19 seconds left. Don't give up the big play, and he makes the tackle. Looks like we're just going to get a knee here. Pine Richland will. Come out and line up a kneel down formation. That's an illegal formation. You got to get up on the ball, 11. There you go. Must have seven on the line of scrimmage they on will, offense. And they will down it, and that'll do it for the first half. Well, Governor Mifflin, 21 point lead at one point. Pine Richland cut that and really just cut it down to two. And then a late touchdown drive by Governor Mifflin to take a 28 19 lead with them through the locker room. Bruce Badgley will have the halftime show for you coming up next. You're watching live coverage of the PIAA Class 5A semifinals on the NFHS Network. Ever wish there was a sports app just for you? Introducing Small Player Big Play app, the all sports social media app for young athletes. Live stream events for your friends and family who can't be there. At home or at work, they can watch your streaming on their phones or on TV by using a mirroring device or AirPlay 2. Download the app from the App Store or Google Play and create an account using a valid email address. That's it. Now you can find friends, join groups, or make new ones. You can upload and watch your own content for free. Watch YouTube uploads for free. Even more streaming options are available with our subscription plans and in-app purchases. Download the app and start sharing with the world your passion for sports today.
Welcome back to Hollidaysburg, halftime of the PIAA 5A semifinal. Very entertaining. Governor Mifflin on top, 28 to 19 over Pine Richland. And look who's joining me here at halftime. Uh, Penn State alum and uh, Governor Mifflin alum, Jan Johnson. How are you doing today, Jan? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. You mind standing over here yeah. so everybody can see your face? I mean, the camera's, you know, right up there. So, uh, gosh, I mean, what did you think about that first half? Uh, I think that Mifflin started out hot. Um, coming out, they had three turnovers. Um, they were doing pretty well, good things on defense, moving the ball on offense. Um, kind of slowed down there a little bit in the second, but the quick score there at the end is, is really big for them. Yeah, you know, uh, it was huge. I mean, they just, it, I was running down the field, and I was talking to the, you know, the guys along the sidelines and said, hey, look, we're back to even, but Mifflin's up too. Yes. Because with all the points off turnovers that first half, Mifflin actually came out ahead, and, th and that big drive there, uh, you know, they've been able to run the ball effectively today. Have you been surprised by that? Uh, not surprised. I mean, they've run the ball throughout their whole history, um, especially this season. They've been doing a really good job running the ball. Um, so they need to keep doing that, I think, um, you know, to keep that offense off the field. That's a very high-powered offense. Uh, they got a good quarterback. So if they can sustain these long drives like this, it's going to be really beneficial for them. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, I'm really, uh, I'm not surprised that it was a high-scoring first half. I'm kind of surprised at the amount of turnovers that were, were uh, you know, uncharacteristic, really, I think, on both sides of the ball. But, uh, you know, for the second half, I mean, what do you look, obviously, the recipe for the Mustangs is going to be to pound the rock. But uh, for Pine Richland, if you were in that locker room right now, you know, what are you telling those guys to, you know, get back in this game? I think that they got to get a stop on defense, not let Mifflin run out the clock with the ball, um, and then just, you know, keep keep getting uh, first downs on offense. You know, it, that, that offense will start to stall if they get, you know, in a, in a second and long situation, a third and long situation. So if they can keep getting, you know, five yards on first down, five yards on second down, just keep moving the ball, they're going to, you know, be all right. Yeah, I thought uh, both teams there kind of little got a little bit out of their comfort zones a couple times. But I think that can be... Uh, uh, attributed to really uh, two good defensive efforts by both teams. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think both defenses are playing pretty well. Um, and, you know, forcing those turnovers, I think the kids are, you know, they're all jacked up. They're all very excited. Um, it's a little bit slippery out here, too. Uh, so you can, you know, say both those things kind of help cause those turnovers. But, I mean, overall, they've been playing re really good football. Yeah, I know the Mifflin sidelines was open for a monsoon, but, <laughs> you know, with the passing game there. But, uh, you know, they said let it rain, and, you know, it has. And, uh, you know, you, obviously you've played a lot of football games. Even a rain like this, does it really affect the football that much in the, in the handling? Um, I think a little bit more on the turf than it would on grass. So I think that just, you know, the turf spikes uh, mm -hmm. popping up and stuff like that. But overall right now, like how it is now, I don't think it's going to affect them too much now in the second half as it was in the first. Well, listen, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it as, uh, you know, Governor Mifflin fan, and it's great to see you. Uh, what's up for Jane Johnson here coming up? Um, just, you know, working out and waiting for an opportunity. Um, you know, just, and when that comes, just, you know, trying to take it and run with it. Well, listen, uh, you know, it was fantastic to, uh, you know, see you. Obviously, I saw you play in high school and then all the way up through Penn State and what have you. Uh, you know, it, it's great that, uh, you know, we can call you a Governor Mifflin alum because, uh, you know, you've been a, a real, you know, pinnacle of what, you know, this community and what this school stands for. So thank you very much. And, you know, best of luck in the future and we'll see what it brings. OK. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll be back with. Uh, Eric Thomas here in a couple minutes.
Welcome back to halftime here at Hollidaysburg High School. Eric Thomas and Fort Chapman with you. It is Governor Mifflin with a 28-19 lead over Pine Richland in eventful first half. Governor Mifflin with 200 yards of offense and Pine Richland with 199. Each team has turned the ball over three times. Each team has rallied from rally after rally, really, in this first half. So we'll see what happens here in the second half. If you joined us late, uh, Alonzo Anderson and Zach Parsons are both out for Governor Mifflin. Parsons was injured in a really scary collision with teammate Trey Rock, but we understand that he is okay. He was just knocked out momentarily, so a lot of the stretcher in the ambulance just out of precaution, which is necessary at the high school level, so uh, really at any level. So it's good to hear that he is okay and it's nothing serious. Alonzo uh, Anderson looks like he has a problem with his shoulder, his left shoulder. So he is out for the game. He took his pads off and uh, put a sling on. So Governor Mifflin is shorthanded defensively. Pine Richland had a really furious rally after a slew of Governor Mifflin turnovers. This game really flipped on the first play of the game when Cam Stewart tipped a Cole Spencer pass. It was intercepted by Mason Clare, and Governor Mifflin was able to score on that drive. They scored after a Pine Richland fumble. They scored after another interception. They got a turnover on downs. Looked like everything was going Governor Mifflin's way, and then they started to turn the ball over, and Pine Richland was able to get themselves back in this game with 19 unanswered, and then just before the half, a nice drive, a Nick Singleton pass of 38 yards to Suber, set up a Strasser touchdown run, his second touchdown of the half. Governor Mifflin got a really, and this is going to be key going forward here, really important touchdown late in that second quarter for Chapman, and they were able to keep this at a two-score advantage then. Absolutely. I'm really impressed with, number one, Pine Richland's ability to come back after all that adversity struck going down 21-0. And then when they did come back and made it 21-19, as you said, Mifflin's ability to just take that ball right down the field, great execution, and getting back to what they do best and taking, continuing to take the lead, but taking the lead, as you said, by two scores. And it looks like they're going to get the ball here to start the second half. Yes, they kicked off to start. So let's see what Mifflin can do here. They'll be heading in the same direction as they went on that last touchdown drive of the half. Once again, let's see what happens turnover-wise, Eric, because that has been a major, major... I mean, any football game, turnovers are big, but that one was just turnovers that led to pretty quick scores, and Mifflin sort of returned the favor several times, including on a kickoff return, turning it over. Well, and... The flip side of it, too, is if we learn one thing about this game is you would think, field position-wise, it would be a problem for Mifflin to have to go the length of the field. They've already shown that they can do that. That's not an right. issue. That's right. You don't want to give the ball back to Pine Richland in short field. They can go the length of the field with anybody. No doubt. And they have gotten really good breaks off of these turnovers and had to deal with short field. So the field position thing... will be key, and, and oh, yeah. turnovers will be a big key in the second half. Oh, yeah. Another thing, Eric. We've yet to see Singleton, the star running back for Governor Mifflin, get the ball and, and do what he's capable of, of breaking some, breaking something and going the distance. And we're going to, good chance we may see that. And he's been very patient out there as he will get the chance to return. And they do switch up the returns. And here comes Nick Singleton to the 35 and shy of the 40 there as Eastburn and Miller are there for the stop. Singleton, you mentioned him, 16 carries, 80 yards in the first half. It's been a very patient effort by him he does have that big 38 yard pass to set up that last touchdown by Mifflin but it's not been the explosive plays it's not trending towards a 200 yard game or what he's been able to do all season long it's just been a very patient kind of taking what he's been given type of game right. for Singleton here and Mifflin's been going up let's face it there's the tackle over set again I'll go with the fullback right away this is Strasser he's got two touchdowns and he carries over to the 40 to the 41 for a three-yard gain on first down and let's face it Mifflin has not faced the defense of this caliber throughout the season Luke Miller the stop that time for Pine Richland now, I would say that this would be a key drive for the Pine Richland defense they've already shown they can rally and they've they scored 19 unanswered in that second quarter alone so we know they can score points and droves rain has subsided here 
at Hollidaysburg High School. Singleton will get the carry. Singleton following his block of Strasser. Gang tackle by Schweiger and Miller. He is close to a first down and will have enough for the first down on a gain of eight. I was on the phone with Coach Contafio, longtime Pennsylvania football coach and in the Pennsylvania Coaching Hall of Fame. Talked to him about how much Mifflin's willing to go unbalanced and then run back. They did it again there. They ran the ISO to the to the two side, the two call there. Just a guard and a tight end there to this side. They're running with the same formation again. Their ability to keep that Pine Richland defense balanced. Strasser again. And actually that was a midline keep. Midline keep yeah, mid yep. by Marniak. So had me faked out there. Nice little run on first down. Jacob Domer had to stop for Pine Richland. It's a three-yard gain. Teams that run that midline there, they're going to put the ball to the fullback right over the center, and the quarterback can either give it or keep it based on what the defensive lineman does to that side. A lot of times you don't block that defensive lineman. You go right down and block the linebackers. That's what they did there, and the quarterback kept it. Arniak under center pitches to Singleton. Left side again. Nice run by Singleton across the 45 and down to the 44 of Pine Richland. A gain of four. And that will set up third down and short. And big, Singleton has to come off the field because he lost his helmet by rule. So they're going to go third and three without their running back, their star tailback. But they still have that nice fullback in there, 27, who hits the quick hitters well, and that is Strausser. They bring in Nate Goodman, the extra tight end. They're not going to get this play. They're going to have to use a timeout. And taking a lot of time to get on the field and get set. Jeff Lang will call a timeout. And while we have a chance to remind you here, this afternoon's game is brought to you by Brute Athletic. This afternoon's player of the game will receive this small player big play custom hoodie from Brute, player, Brute Athletic Apparel. Visit BruteProShop.com to find amazing apparel made locally in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. This afternoon's broadcast is powered by Brute Athletic Apparel. So out of the timeout, Governor Mifflin will have third down and three from the 44 of Pine Richland as the skies start to clear up here a little bit. Game was delayed momentarily for the injury to Zach Parsons. And we're running a little bit late here. Most of the games across the state of Pennsylvania and the state tournament are going to be final. And we'll have a clearer picture of this championship weekend coming up next week. Erie Cathedral Prep will play the winner of this game in the 5A state championship. The 6A state championship is half set. St. Joe's Prep is back to defend their title. 3A game is about set. Why I'm missing is rolling Danville right now, so they'll take on Central Valley. And we know Jeanette is in the single A championship game. Steel High Bishop Guilfoyle tied at seven right now in the second half. So the winner of that will play Bishop Guilfoyle. And in the 2A game, Wilmington is back. And they will take on either Southern Columbia or Bishop McDevitt out of Wincote in the Philadelphia area. Third down and three for Governor Mifflin here from the 44 of the Rams. They could have brought their running back Singleton back in the game, but they chose not to. They're in a different kind of center. Corbett's going to roll that way. Playboy dead. And that is against Mifflin, motion against Mifflin. So five yards will back him up, make third and eight. A little bit longer now. Now they're going to bring Singleton into the game here. They keep him out. Yeah, there, there, there's some kind of, I think there's some kind of trick play set up here. There has to be, or they put him back in the game. He can go back in because of the timeout that was called, even though no play has been run. They're in a trip set. I got a referee's conversation here near midfield. They're resetting the clock. When you have a st when when you have a phenomenal football player and you don't have him in the game on offense on a third down and three and now a third and eight you would think something's coming that's tricky 
Steel High taking a 13-7 lead. Marinak going to throw it down the middle. Pass in and out of the hands of Cameron Stewart. Caden Schweiger, the coverage that time to force fourth down. Really nice play. Now they're going to, you got to punt the football here. Yeah, you might think about it if it's still fourth and three, but fourth and eight. They're not putting the punt team on yet. I no. find this hard to believe. They are not. They're at midfield. Marniak is the punter, so they bring Nick Singleton back out. Looks like they are going to go for it here. Offense is going to at least line up. I'm betting they're putting out a shotgun, but I, who knows? You're at midfield. This is, they're going to go for it. No. Yep, yep, he's putting. And Marinak will drop back and punch this one away. Good oh, it's kick and actually hit the player can't for Pine Ridgeland. You, you can't advance it. It's yeah. your ball right back Charlie there. Charlie Mill. Charlie Where Mill. Where you recovered it. Was the player for Pine Richland. It bounced off of him. And Aiden Martin, your guy for who has been everywhere involved in this game in just about every facet, is there to scoop it up. Wisely wow. done by Martin. He was going back to down it, knowing that it was taking a Governor Mifflin bounce. It caromed off of Charlie Mill. And Aiden Martin sets up Governor Mifflin deep in Pine Richland territory at the 16 yard line. Yep, you got to know as a defensive back there in that position, you get away from that punt. But you're so you're not used to seeing it. It happened. It happened in '99 with the Harrisburg McDevitt game. We quick kicked when I was the head coach at Harrisburg, and a, a defensive back from McDevitt tried to pick it up inside the 10 yard line. He muffed it just like that, right there. Unbalanced. Here it comes. Iso weak. And off to Singleton, he got through the arms of one defender, and all the way down to the 12 yard line for a four yard gain that time. And what I believe happens, Eric, you're a D back. You. All of a sudden, you're not used to seeing a ball kicked on an offensive set, and there comes the ball. It's coming towards you, and your natural reaction sometimes is just the inclination is to reach out and take the ball. Yeah, good call by you to point out about not advancing that ball. But Aiden Martin, Johnny on the spot, he's at the bottom of your screen now. So he'll hand off to Strausser. Strausser carrying the pile. Strausser working his way inside the five. And he is down towards the goal line inside the one. So it'll be first and goal for Governor Mifflin with 8.24 to go in the third quarter. Is he a bruising fullback or what? Yeah. Once again, they're lined up in that tackle over set. Unbalanced to the left. This will be a big drive here for Governor Mifflin. They're already up two scores. You're definitely going to see the sneak or the fullback. Singleton, the deep back, first and goal. They run Marinak up the middle. He stretches. He's he in. is in, and there is the call. Touchdown, Governor Mifflin. 7.59 to go in the third. The punt, the special teams play, sets that up. And Governor Mifflin in front 34 to 19. Yeah. Third down and eight. Then it's a fourth and eight on fourth and eight. We knew something was up that they're lined up and shotgun with three receivers, but with a lead here in a state semifinal, really nice play getting the quarterback, who is their punter, as you said, backing up a step or two and then booting it. Not a great punt on the basically shotgun quick kick, but ended up turning out to be perfect for Mifflin. They're going to go for two here. It's already a 15-point lead, so a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and another touchdown would... To me, you want to get as many points as possible. Yeah, I agree There's no that. right or wrong answer, but I'm kicking the extra point every time here. And uh, just for the simple reason, to get more points on the board, because you don't know how things are going to unfold with the points in this game. Would force uh, Pine Richland to go for two twice, though. Maranak will keep. Maranak tuck and run, and he is going to be taken down short of the goal line. Domer got in there to stop him, so it'll stay at 34 to 19 with 7.59 to go here in the third quarter. Governor Mifflin, to your point about getting as many points as possible, I mean, again, you go back to the two issues on defense, not having two starters out there lost in this game. You know, you, you probably want to try to keep as much of an advantage as you possibly can. Tonight's broadcast is powered by Brute Athletic Apparel. Brute specializes in sublimated sports apparel that will make you stand out in a crowd or on the field. Brute's uniforms are made in the USA, right in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. Visit BruteProShop.com for our current selections. So Marinac, the touchdown run. Let's see how Pine Richland responds. 
So Pine Richland in this game, uncharacteristic for them because they've taken such good care of the ball this season. They've had two interceptions, a fumble, turnover on downs, and they muffed the punt. Punt return. Sure, sure. And that muffed punt was a field position swing and a, and a, a six-point swing. And now let's see what... All the way down to just under eight minutes. So four minutes off the clock, and Pine Richland has yet to touch the football here offensively after having a really good second quarter. Central York is up nine on McDowell in the other semifinal. So <clears throat> we're getting close to that 6A matchup being officially set with St. Joe's Prep. Again, that St. Joe's Prep score is going to look a little bit closer than what the game actually was as they had six first-half touchdown passes by Kyle McCord. So and that game was not in any question when Satterton started working against the second team. Millis will get the return after one tackler. Got away from another, stays on his feet, got by Suber, and then is dragged down by Jordan Kirshner, but not before he gets to midfield or close to midfield for Pine Richland to set up shop in really good position here. It's, like two, half people, field to work with. it's like two people there tried to throw him to the ground instead of tackling him. You know, anytime you take a chance to get a quick hit or throw somebody to the ground, they keep their balance. That can happen. Ball's at the 46, just outside of midfield for this high-powered Pine Richland offense, which once again will have to rally by double digits here in the second half. They scored 19 unanswered in the second, and they'll come out in their spread formation here to start things on their first possession of the third. Spencer, quick throw, oh, it's intercepted! Intercepted by Suber. Suber is off and running and he's tackled by Spencer inside the 25 down to the 21 yard line. Eric, what did we talk about, about going to the well one too many times with those hitches? I said there's gonna be a D-back, it's gonna jump these, you're gonna take a risk and jump it. And, and he did, phenomenal defensive play. Yeah, just see it right there, Suber stepping right in front of the pass. Cole Spencer, man, he has had a rough afternoon. He's thrown for 157 yards. He's attempted 22 passes here, and he has been picked off a trio of times. Another Pine Richland turnover. Greg Suber, nice height, 6'2", defender. Here's the end over set. Fullback so close, you're expecting the fullback dive, and here it is, fullback dive. Strausser carrying the load again, pushed back after a quick gain inside the 20 to the 16, a four-yard or a six-yard gain, rather. Close to a six-yard gain. See where they mark it. They mark it. Very first play from scrimmage. Offensively for Pine Richland, another turnover. And turnover's the key to this entire football game. And now they're going Mifflin's way. It's a five-yard gain by Strausser. Jeff Lang has said, we have players. He has been adamant that they can hang with anybody. A Strasser has guys hanging all over him, and he gets inside the 10, right to the 10-yard line for another seven-yard gain, and that's going to give him a first down. I didn't mention this, Eric. I was watching it, and I didn't say anything. When they came off the field after that missed two-point conversion, Strasser looked at a couple of his coaches, and we're just like, "Get you, could, you couldn't hear him, but I'm sure he was saying, just keep feeding me the ball. Keep feeding me the ball. And then sooner or later, you're going to pull it and pitch the ball to that phenomenal tailback and get big yardage, but just keep riding this guy. First and goal from the 10. Strasser off the right side. Spins, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run by Strasser, and he is carrying everybody right now. And this Governor Mifflin team is up 40-19. to 19. Now, do they kick the extra point or go for two? I think you really just want to get points on the board. Yeah, they're bringing the kicker in here. Kicker coming in now. Get that get that point. Keep throwing them up there. It's now a 21-point game. It's still making a three-score game regardless, so school's extra point is up, and it is good. 41-19, Governor Mifflin. This is the PIAA Class 5A 
semifinals on the NFHS Network. Today's game is brought to you in part by Alvernia University and Reading College Town. Be a part of the future and enroll in one of our three new engineering majors or enhance business and communication programs. Join the pack. The Golden Wolves boast one of the largest athletic departments in Division Three, with the addition of men's and women's ice hockey, men's and women's wrestling, and esports. Learn more at alvernia.edu. Eric Thomas and Fort Chapman with you. Let's take a look at that touchdown run again by Strasser. Another power run by Look at how close he is, Eric, to the quarterback to begin with. You're right, power just keeps his legs driving, holds on to the football after an earlier fumble to turn the tide a little bit. And now they're back in Pater Mifflin. We're going to expect another squib kick here, obviously. They have to cover better, though. You can't give the ball. Now you're up three scores, but you can't give the ball to this Ram high, high explosive offense near midfield by having missed tackles. This has been another one of those momentum shifts. It's been a game of quarters here, literally and figuratively, as Governor Mifflin has scored 14, 13 points right off the jump here in the second half. See how Pine Richland responds again. I mean, they're certainly not out of it. We know that. But at some point, you have to think that this power attack by Governor Mifflin just might break these guys. Just a matter of when. And they, they are running out of time here. Just over 18 minutes of clock time left to play here as they knuckle that one down the field. For another short return, or another uh, good field position here by the Rams. They Heck, you're better off return. kicking an onside kick. Yeah, Tristan Taylor had the return that time for Pine Richland. And they have less than half a field to go with once again. Twice now that an onside kick is going to get you similar field position, and you may recover the onside kick. I understand they're you know trying to squib it, but they're just giving up a lot of field position. And this could put Pine Richland right back in the game and gain them momentum. As you see the trips open set, one back in the backfield. Eli Yo Kim is to the bottom of your screen in the slot. They motion Miller back in the backfield. And they'll keep it on the ground here. They've tried to get that running game going with Jordan Burns and others here today. You got to keep the defense honest. I like the play call. However, getting three yards is going to choose some clock. And now here we're going to get some play action. Look for the pass down here to the wide, to the one receiver side. There it is, the fake Spencer throws. Pass caught by Yo Kim on the far side. Dragging Suber for the first down, and he will have it over on that Pine Richland sideline. Super's been active. He's going to have to step up in this secondary now. Hitch and go. Spencer looking deep. And just overshot the intended receiver, Charlie Mill, on the far side. Nick Singleton had the coverage that time. Now you're trying to pick on a Division One athlete out there on the corner. I understand going to the one receiver side. But Singleton has such good athleticism, and he can make up, has that makeup speed. Really good play, good good route. They faked the hitch, went with the hitch and go. Like the idea. It's getting tight in the single A semifinal. Give me a scoreboard update after the play as Burns going to meet the teeth of that Governor Mifflin defense. Big Mason Clare in there. Remember, he had the interception early in this game. Steel High driving, they're down 14 to 13 with 2.05 left in the single A game. That is at Cottage Hill and Steelton against Bishop Guilfoyle. Guilfoyle, of course, last year lost the single A championship game to Farrell on a wacky field goal to end the game. As Spencer's going to drop back, Got him. throw it down the field. Got Joe Kim, he's all alone, and he is in the end zone for the touchdown. 29 yards from Cole Spencer to his favorite target, and Pine Richland creeps their way back in it again. No free safety help over the top. You got a inside receiver to the right running the post route, quick out fake. As a defender, when you're one-on-one -on -one coverage, you can't buy, you can't go for an out fake. He got his hips turned, and it's over. It's just over, especially when you have a quarterback who can put the ball right on the money and get protected like that. 
that quickly, Pine Richland put seven back, Eric, and we now have a football game again. 26 points. Puts them down 15 again. Take a look at the touchdown here again. Spencer. Watch watch the slot back here. Out fake, just goes off the screen, comes back, has him beat by five yards. You must get inside leverage as a defensive back, and you cannot go for any out fakes and give up that inside leverage because once that receiver crosses your face, it's a e much easier throw for the quarterback. And you have no help. If you had a free safety help in there, that's one thing. There's no help back there. You're watching live coverage of the PIAA football semifinals on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash PIAA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Pennsylvania high school playoff action. Well, fundamentals of football. Be careful on a, on a punt from the quarterback in a, an offensive set if you're a D-back. Unless you're sure you can get that ball and run with it, get away from it. Scream, poison, Peter, whatever your call is, and get out of the way and get everybody else out of the way so your offense can get the ball. That's Pine Richland on defense for Governor Mifflin. On third and long, make sure you keep inside leverage, especially on the slot receiver. Still plenty of time to go here. Pine Richland going to need to stop defensively as they'll punch this one down the field. Martin is there, and he'll just grab it and step out of bounds. Now let me tell you what you could have done there if you're Martin. A lot of people don't know this. He could have stood on the out-of-bounds line. Pick that ball, touch that ball, which means he's out of bounds, the ball's out of bounds, and you get the ball all the way up at the 35-yard line. It was that close to the sidelines, he could have done that. You'll see it sometimes happen, and especially in the NFL ranks, a heady return man will do that. So this Mifflin offense back out on the field here, up 41-26, and still again a two-score game. Plenty of time left here, just over 17 minutes left. And you have a fullback who is a stud and it cannot be stopped, and you have a tailback who's probably the best player on the entire football field. So look for them to keep it on the ground. Arniak will hand off to Strausser on first down. And again, a short run, but enough, it's effective enough. That's right. You're getting three yards. If you get three yards three times, you're fourth and one. Trey Rock actually was the ball carrier that time, number two. Either way, the two fullbacks, they can rotate, Rock and Strasser. They've been a handful. Rock's, that's his third carry here this afternoon. You know what we're seeing now, don't you? That good old tailback. Starting some clock run. Five on the play clock, and there's their toss. Singleton right side this time, and they're able to bottle him up. Almost right away, Domer is in there along with Cole Schrumann. Along with number 68, Jacob up third down and seven now. You're going to have to go to the, almost undoubtedly, go to the air to try to pick up this first. What don't you want to do? Turn the ball over. Even so, you've got the punt deep in your territory. Pine Richland, if they can get off the field here, is going to have really good field position. Yeah, they will with 3.51 to go. Third and seven is not optimum down Trips in distance. Merrinac won't throw much. They'll throw here to Singleton. They're all over it this time. First time today we've called M Miguel Jackson's name. He came up with a ball. He's saying that he wrestled it away from Singleton. They're going to say that Singleton was down. We have not called his name at all today. And he steps up and makes a much-needed defensive stop for his team. You can feel the momentum shifting in this stadium. It's a loss of seven, so Mifflin will punt it away. Merrinac will do the honors, gets a high spiral up in the lights there. Mellis will let it bounce out of bounds. Trey Rock was there with a coverage team for Governor Mifflin. And Pine Richland, again, half a field. They can score. They don't need any assistance in getting the ball down the field. And they got half a field to go here now, trailing 41-26. See what they do here on this drive. I mean, they can strike quick. 
You mentioned about the, the run game there. They run to keep the defense honest. They ran to set up play action the last drive. That's right. Eastburn's in the backfield with Spencer now. There's just no free safety help. They'll keep it on the ground here in first down. Eastburn, nice run. One of his best runs of the afternoon. We'll cut through that Mifflin defense for a gain of five. Aiden Martin had to stop. Don't give him four yards officially. Ball. Now, so Again. important on the loss, if you're if you're Governor Mifflin, Eric, you it'd be nice to just loosen the box up. You're not going to see a running play here. You're going to see a pass. You can't you got to avoid this one-on-one -on -one coverage. Great defensive play. Yeah, it really was. Here it comes. Pine Richland goes so quick back to the line. We've no safety help. All day. Spencer going to step back. There he back, is again. Fire it. Yo, Kim is open. Oh, How do you not know that's catch. coming? He is into the end zone for the touchdown. 52 yards from Cole Spencer once again finds his favorite target. And Pine Richland draws that much closer. It's 41-32. I mean, you got to expect the exact same play. You have no safety help. If you're Pine Richland, if you're... Governor Mifflin, not to get too negative here or critical, but you have to know a pass play's coming. Get a safety over the top help, play man free, so you can help with all those crossing routes and those deep balls. And if you're not going to play man free, your defender has to keep inside leverage. Joachim's second touchdown today. He's got 137 yards receiving here, and it's 41-33. So Pine Richland has drawn closer now than a score of Governor Mifflin here with 2.10 to go in the third quarter. You're watching live coverage of the PIAA State Semifinals on the NFHS Network. High school fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, nfhsnetwork.com. We are high school. And we are at Hollidaysburg High School for this 5A semifinal, 41-33, Governor Mifflin. Here's a, here's a good example of on-the-field coaching. When the players come off to the sideline, you have to grab the defenders, the D-backs, and, and you have to break it down for them and do your coaching during the game, in between series. Make sure your players are aware of this situation and what to expect from an offense who you just got for a big loss and you had them at third and 11. Again, the winner of this game will take on Cathedral Prep in the 5A state championship game next weekend at Hershey Park Stadium. Let's check the PIAA site. This week for the times, they may arrange the times. Steel High has kicked a field goal to go ahead 16-14 in the single A, uh, single A semifinal with 38 seconds to play. Andy Irby trying to get his team to the state finals. That Steel High team, you know, a lot of people will remember, those that have followed high school football in this state will remember the Jeremiah Young years and what they were able to do is Martin Fields that kick and then he just trickles out of bounds over that Pine Richland sideline. Steel High's got one of the best players in the country, too, in Makai Flowers. He is courted by just about every major Power 5 team out there. Steelton High Spire, Steelton School itself, known for its tradition for over a century of football. And in 1978, Steel High won the was ranked number one in the state, won the ranking state title because state playoffs didn't start till exactly a decade later. In 82, they finished tied with Cumberland Valley and Steel Valley for number one in the state, and they won two in a row back when they dropped down to single A under Coach Rob Dibler. Yep, the late Rob Dibler, great coach. As Strausser will carry up to the 30. Five-yard gain again, so that effective first down run of five by Strausser, and that's what Governor Mifflin needs here. They need to keep moving the sticks three, four, five yards at a, at a time. They can't get stuck in third and long against this Pine Richland defense. And field position is obviously a big key. They're giving Pine Richland short fields. Coming up after the game, our brute player of the game. Bruce Badgley will have the presentation of that down on the field. We'll be back to wrap it up after he is Unique done. Unique set there. right here. Aranak under center on second down. They'll go with Strausser again. And the defense for Pine Richland Starting to heat up a little bit as they're all over that one. Once again, Harrison Hayes is in there for the stop. 
Interesting there how they did that. They put they put their star tailback out in the trip set, third receiver and middle receiver in the trip set. I'm still not going to be surprised. I'm, I'm banking they may keep the ball somehow on the ground, but they're bringing out their stud fullback, Strausser, for this play. They're down at six. Sprint this way. They're going to sprint to the right, left. my call. Here it comes. Sprint left. Aranak stops, throws, passes, almost intercepted. Luke Miller had his hands on it. Maranak was looking down the field for Cameron Stewart. Number 11 was open for the first down for Mifflin. Quarterback didn't see him. That would have been Cameron Stewart. So Governor Mifflin will punt it away here. When you sprint, you condense the field. So all the defense is going along with that. And sometimes chances for picks if the ball's not thrown on rhythm and accurately. Aranyak will boot it away again. It's not a great punt. That is going to sail out of bounds on the Pine Richland sideline. This may be down to, it is, at the 29-yard line. That's still moving. 31. 31, so it's a two-yard punt by Marinac and Pine Richland in prime position again. They just need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie this thing. Spencer will guide the offense here on first and 10 from the Governor Mifflin 31. Look for him to shift out of it. I'm expecting to shift out of this after the ball is put in play. They're in a double tight wing eye set. Haven't seen anything near that. Quarterback's under center. Maybe they're going to run a quick toss play, see if they can get something on the perimeter. But I doubt it. Yeah, they're going to shift out, as expected. Yo, Kim is in the backfield here on first down. Now, he's going to come out to the bottom of your screen. He's going to be in the slot, bottom part of your screen with Gokis wide. Spencer, snap. Eastburn, the carry, eastbound around the left side, around the left side there, and he is cut down after a minimal gain on first down. They do just enough, though, running the football to keep you honest. Sure, That's sure. all they use that running game for, and it's effective. And what they're getting, Eric, when they run play action, they're getting all the guys in the box they want. You look at it right now, eight in the box. Option. Spencer will pitch it to Eastburn, and what a play over on the far side by Nate Goodman to bring him down for no gain, for short gain. Goodman, the junior, 6'4", D end, played the quarterback and the pitch there. Not easy to do. Through three quarters, one to go. It is Governor Mifflin, 41, Pine Richland, 33. You're watching the PIAA Class 5A semifinals on the NFHS Network. Ever wish there was a sports app just for you? Introducing Small Player Big Play app, the all sports social media app for young athletes. Live stream events for your friends and family who can't be there. At home or at work, they can watch your streaming on their phones or on TV by using a mirroring device or AirPlay 2. Download the app from the App Store or Google Play and create an account using a valid email address. That's it. Now you can find friends, join groups, or make new ones. You can upload and watch your own content for free. Watch YouTube uploads for free. Even more streaming options are available with our subscription plans and in-app purchases. Download the app and start sharing with the world your passion for sports today. Back here at, Hers at uh, Hollisburg, we're talking about Hershey Park Stadium during the break at Hollisburg High School. Eric Thomas and Fort Chapman with you. Start of the fourth quarter, it's 41-33. Governor Mifflin in front of Pine Richland. And Pine Richland facing a third down and seven. Central Sing York has clinched it. They're up 37-21 with under two minutes to play. Right. They're headed to play St. Joe's Prep in the 6A final. Yep, and it looks like Steel High is going to take on Jeanette in the single A final as Bishop Guilfoyle more on that here in a second. And uh, Spencer will shift guys out. Miller going to the top of your screen. Second guy's ineligible up top there. Yeah, Miguel Jackson is a blocker. Spencer looking, going to throw that's it out. In that's in penalty. That's a penalty. That should be a penalty. He's ineligible. Miller. They blew the call. Here's what happened. How can you not call that? Hold on a second. Go ahead. <laughs> Miller. 
Carries it down inside the 25 to the, see where they marked him down. He should be right around the 11-yard line. It's a 17-yard catch and run at the 12 officially, so 16 yards. Spencer will hand off. Schweiger right at the gut. Nobody touches him, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Schweiger's first carry of the afternoon, and it's good for a 12-yard touchdown run. And Pine Richland is a two-point try away. Let's see, they're going to go for two here. They, they obviously have to. This would make it 41 apiece. Spencer will shift back to the shotgun. Here on the two-point try. They have failed a couple times here on two-point attempts this afternoon. You have Kim in motion. Spencer rolls out. Pressure coming. He throws it. Corner. It is tiptoed and caught for the two-point conversion over on the far sideline. Jeremiah Hasley comes down with it, gets his heels down, and we are tied at 41 in the Class 5A semifinal. My goodness. Take a look at that two-point try one more time. Unbelievable effort by Hasley to keep his feet inbounds and pull this down. I don't know how he was able to know where he was in the field. Great pressure by that Governor Mifflin defense and a great throw by oh, Spencer yes. over the top oh, of the yes. defense. Very good. If we can go back to the play before that, the touchdown, I'm going to show you if we can pause it, if we can pause it at the formation. Right there, there are there are three receivers out wide right. One, two of those have to be on the ball because there are two backs in the backfield with the quarterback. So that guy cannot catch a forward pass. If you run the play there, they throw the ball to him. It's forward. Watch. Forward pass. That's a, that's a penalty. Automatic penalty. An eligible receiver down uh, catching a forward pass, even though he caught it behind the line of scrimmage. It doesn't matter, but not called by the referees. Yep, that's an unfortunate. Air. We don't obviously have replay here in high school football. We are tied at 41. Pine Richland just refuses to go away. And you cannot give them short fields. They have made this Governor Mifflin team pay in the short field. So it'll be Mifflin's offense again with a chance here to recapture the lead. Still tons of time left in this game at 11.43 to go. Not that it matters at this point, but... Pine Richland has three timeouts. Governor Mifflin has two. And the return on the short kick, they've done the short kick again, is Javier Pena. And the Governor Mifflin offense will take over here first and 10 with 11.40 to play. I can't help myself sometimes, Eric. I went over to the guys judging the officials here. They're here to monitor the officials. I'm sure it's a good officiating crew, but you have, to, you have seven guys out there. You have to know that that is that is not allowed. Throwing a forward pass to a guy lined up ineligible. Now nobody can communicate with the officials downstairs. There's no review. Play stands, we're tied at 41. Maranac hands off Singleton. He has still not broken the big run. He'll get a four yard gain on first down that time. I like that, I like that play of faking the fullback who's been gotten a lot of yards in Strasser and then giving it to on a counter play. They got some big yards on that before and Granted, they only got three, four yards there, but nonetheless, it gets the ball to your money back. You got to ride these two horses. Yes. Singleton is over 100 yards now at 103. Aranak, the snap. He'll hand it off to Strasser, the big fullback, bulldozing his way across the 40 up to the 42. Three yard gain that time will set up third down and short. In a big game like this, as a fish, as official crew, I hate to belabor, but you just you can't miss a call like that. I know it was a strange offensive set, but you got to know who's eligible and who's not. And when you make a mistake, like nothing against Pine Richland, but it, that play should have been negated. Clock winding down to about ten and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Maranac hands off Strausser again, up across the forty-five. Will have enough for the first down of the forty-six. Four-yard run on third down and three.
Strausser is working on a 100-yard afternoon here as well. He's up to 89 yards. Those two, Singleton and Strausser, have combined for 41 carries. Merrinack has four, and Rock has three, and that is it as far as running the ball. Who else would carry for this Governor Mifflin team? Merrinack will hand off Strausser again. They'll go with the short run again of three. Clock will wind under 10 minutes here. Trey Rock, I beg your pardon, had the carry. Strausser is actually getting worked out down on the sideline. So he is out for a couple of moments. Looks like they're working on his left leg. So we'll see if it's just a cramp. Looks like that's all it is. He's back up now and jumping around. So Rock will stand at fullback. Singleton, Rock gets to carry again. The fresh legs of Trey Rock will carry this one down across the 45. Love the term fresh legs, no doubt about it. Strausser's trying to play offense and defense, and it's a good move by the coaching staff occasionally to get this fresh-legged fullback in there, and he's picking up big positive yardage. That was a clutch run. Clock. It shoots clock, and it's going to get another first down here, most likely on a third and one. Yep, clock down, approaching nine minutes here, nine ten to go. It continues to run. And off to Rock again, and on third down and short. They didn't give him enough for the first down on the last run, but he has it there. Don't even measure that one. Rock will stay out there. Strausser looking for him on the sideline here. He got up, he worked out the cramp. He is ready to go back in. He's standing right next to Jeff Lang down on the sideline. So first and 10 for Mifflin, 8.39 to go with the ball resting on the 44. Maranac hands off. It is Cameron Stewart with a carry. His first of the afternoon. They strip him. They almost stripped him. Did the ball come out? Let's see. They didn't mark no, him. No, yeah, he was able to hang on to it. Nice idea to try to, on a counter play, to try to get the ball to another skill guy, Stewart. But... We're, they're just not getting the ball in the hands of their star tailback quite enough. Just love to see them get the ball in that tailback's hands to, to make something big happen. But you got to credit the defense of Pine Richland. They're swarming all over the field. Great comeback by Pine Richland. Under eight to go now, down to 7.55. As Strausser, check that. Yep, Strausser back in the game, and he will get the first down. Down to the Pine Richland 30-yard line. Anytime you have a play-by-play -play announcer up here, Eric, such as yourself, saying check that when the fullback did get the ball, that means very good faking by the quarterback, and that's what you want with your dive option type set. You don't want to be able to know who has the ball. Great faking and execution there by the quarterback for Governor Mifflin, Marinac. And you don't want to be in any hurry if you're Governor Mifflin, if you're nope. Pine Richland. She's got to somehow try to get a stop here and even keep him from getting a field goal. Excellent drive here down to 720 as they pitch to Singleton, trying to get to the corner. And he will get past that defense momentarily. Luke Miller ran him out of bounds, then ran into the kicking net on the Governor Mifflin sideline. But a good run by Singleton that time. There you're getting the ball to your skill guy in space. Running the fullback well. Good read by the quarterback to pull it and pitch it. The slot back missed his block. And almost, but Singleton's so athletic, he was able to avoid the player on the first guy on the perimeter at the point of attack and get the eight-yard gain. 111 yards now for Singleton. They will fake to him and hand off to Strausser. And again, good run, second and short. They get just enough on those second down or third down runs to set themselves up in second and short, third and short. Strausser over 100 yards rushing now as well. And Governor Mifflin will take this under seven minutes when they snap the ball. It'll be first and 10 from the 19 of Pine Richland. Pine Richland doesn't need much time. We know that. Aranak under center. Pitch to Singleton. Singleton right side. Had a hole for a moment, then it closed. They went to the two-call side right there again. Only a... Only a guard and a tight end. That side on the tackle over set. Both receivers also to the wide side of field to the left, and they go back to the right on the toss as you see it on our replay. Singleton is so talented 
even though the defense is right there pursuing well, he's still able to pick up four and a half yards. Same formation. Look for the fullback. They're neck under center. They'll blow this dead. That's the third time they've had a false start. In this situation, it doesn't hurt you as much as some of the other ones have. They're on the 15, so still a short field, but down to 6.14 to go. So the clock, you, I know you're going to disagree with this, but I think the clock is the bigger thing at this point. Yes, but at the same time, if you're an offense, you don't want to overcoach that because you want to stay in a rhythm. And you're doing so well getting the ball done. If you don't want your quarterback thinking about something else. Now, if you're down to three minutes or something, no doubt about it. But there's still six minutes left. Tackle over left. High backs. Ernak, they got somebody to jump again. They got the fullback to flinch. That's going to be another five yards. Yep. Trying to get Pine Richland to move. Your fullback flinches. All the Governor Mifflin fans are yelling boo, but the fullback flinched. That's the bottom line. So that's a five-yard penalty. Now you're second and 15, second and 14. That'll make it second and 16. The clock is still going to be, it's under six minutes now. And they can run this down to about five and a half before they snap it. You're just forcing Governor Mifflin to do something offensively that they don't usually do. No, that's the key. Second and 16. Marinak will go play action. Pressure coming, and Miguel Jackson is there. He got around Connor Lentz for the moment, and then Jackson, who has made his presence known here in the last six minutes or so, comes up with a huge sack for this Pine Richland defense. And all this was caused, Eric, by lack of poise on the offensive front, on the cadence, and getting off the ball all 11 at once. On offense, you have to do that. As well as Governor Mifflin's played offensively here today, now they're in a place they don't want to be. And you got to be very careful you don't turn the ball over here. They're down at 24 with 4.50 to go. Marinak looks. He will fire it incomplete on the far side. Intercepted. They're going to give him the interception. They most certainly... Let's see, the refs are going to have to talk about this. There is a flag down as well. It, it's a, a, roughing the, for the, a roughing the quarterback area. We all look to the, let's see if that's it. It's going to be an automatic first down. Yes, it is. Unbelievable. So the mistakes by Governor Mifflin and then a huge one by Pine Richland to negate the interception. Take a look at the replay here and you'll see it. Aranak did get popped after he threw the football. They have been coming after him. And then over on the far side, it was picked Can off. Can see so it one more time? We have time here. Take a look at it again. Penalty yardage will get walked off here. And this Man, is I don't like that. I don't like that call. It, unless he was going to the head area, unless they say they, like, hit him too high. But, my God, the, the, the quarterback, the ball was out of his hands as he's being hit. You got to play football. That guy, you know, the quarter, the defender's going full speed. I don't like that call against Pine Richland. Nonetheless, it gives a first and ten inside the twenty. Now the clock's down under five minutes. And off the oh, the option at the Singleton. Singleton trying to cut back. He lost. He slipped initially, and then had to cut back to try to gain something. Very good defense by Pine Richland there. They took away the fullback. Quarterback had to pull it. Took away the quarterback. Made the pitch man get the ball and cut back for no gain. Textbook defense by the Rams. Now, clock's moving. It's going to be under four minutes maybe here when they Before snap the snap, it. No doubt. Taking under four minutes, down to 4.15 to go. And are they in field goal range? Potentially. Not a great well, kicker, but potential to make that. Remember, they haven't attempted a field goal all season long. Jackson Schools is... Perfect on his point afters, but no field goal attempts. They pitch to Singleton. Toss to the split side. Coming near side. He turns it up field. Going to get slammed right around the 16-yard line. It's going to be a short gain of two. Gang of Rams there to make the stop. If I'm Pine Richland, I'm calling a timeout right here because I got to get the ball back either way. But I don't want them chewing too much clock here. 
25 seconds on the play clock. It's going to take it down to about 312 when the ball snapped. Big third and nine. Still don't be surprised if we see the fullback or an option. I'm, I'm running the option. That's what our bread and butter is. Strausser is in the game in front of Singleton. Third and nine, 317 to go. They go play action. Tight end. Act on the middle. It is tipped and knocked away. Eli Kim had a chance, but just couldn't hang on to it. And that'll bring up fourth down. And you got to, I don't know how good your field goal kicker is. If you could, yeah, they're going to go, they're going to try to kick it. Got it's not that far. What do we got here? The, where's the ball, Eric? It's on the 17. 17. So it's a 34 yard try. It is not going to be Jackson Schools. It'll be Wes Grillo who tries it. So Jackson Schools, who normally kicks the point afters, does not have a field goal attempt this season. Wes Grillo will attempt to give Governor Mifflin the lead. It's a good snap, good hold. Grillo's foot into it, and it's over the crossbar. And good 34-yard field goal. And Governor Mifflin has retaken the lead at 44-41 with 3.06 to go. Governor Mifflin obviously sky high for making that field goal. Let's look at the other side here. Now you have to kick off. Every time you have kicked off lately, you have given phenomenal field position to a high-powered offense. So if you're Governor Mifflin, you got to somehow try to keep Pine Richland. I'm actually thinking of kick deep and running down and trying to cover it because these squib kicks have really hurt them. And nonetheless, Pine Richland with three minutes left, you may as well say there are six minutes left. That offense, that time is negligible for them. They only have one possession to do it, but plenty of time left for this offense. Here's the other side of it. Wes Grillo on the season, he too, obviously had not, nobody on this Governor Mifflin team has attempted a field goal until that. He was only two of six on extra points. So you're taking what is a 17, 18 yard kick on an extra point, backing that up to 34 yards. How about it? And it probably would have been good from 40 if he needed it. That is a clutch kick from a guy who, in a big spot, had to do something he has not tried all year long for this Governor Mifflin team. 44-41, 3.06 to go. State championship game berth on the line here for Governor Mifflin and Pine Richland. Pine Richland has rallied from down 21. Cut it to 21-19. They have rallied from 41-19 down to tie it at 41. Do they have one more rally in them? If they do, it might be enough to go to the state final. If they don't, Governor Mifflin is going to go for the first time. Grillo will squib this one. Didn't get the hoppy needed. Tristan Taylor on the return across the 35, out of bounds, up near the 40. We're going to give him across the 40. I thought he was out of bounds right at the 40-yard line. And they knocked him out at the 38, so that's where Pine Richland will start. Not, not across midfield like they've had the last couple, but it's still very good field position. Field goal ties it for overtime. Touchdown wins it depending on how quickly you score the touchdown. And they're gonna see, look at this set. Michigan ran this several years ago and they've come out of it and they're gonna snap it very quickly usually once they get set. They're actually gonna wait on the snap and they're handing it off. Yep, they sure are. Eastburn gets the carry. Fumble! Fumble the football. And he was able to get back on it. Actually, big number 55 got on it for the Pine Richland offense, Hayes, Harrison Hayes, jumps on it, gives him an extra three yards. Clock is down to 235. Schweiger out of the backfield, Spencer will keep. keep. Gets around the left side, first down, He's gone. Spencer is down the sideline and Pine Richland's got the lead. 54 yards for Cole Spencer. They don't need much time. They didn't need it there. And Pine Richland is 218 away from going back to Hershey. What a play call. A quarterback keeper after you motion to the trips. 
Motion one back out. The other back lead blocks for you to the, to the weak side. Now this extra point is going to be big because it'll make it a four-point game. A field goal can't tie it. Essico will attempt, and the point after is up, and it is good. So it's a four-point spread for Pine Richland with 2.18 to go. Here's your replay. Go ahead and break it down for us. Quarterback leads to the weak side. Gets down the sideline, there's no contain, and he's off to the races. That quickly, two plays, Pine Richland. Believe it or not, two running plays, and Pine Richland is in the end zone, taking the ball 62 yards in, tw in two plays. Coming up after the game, you can stay tuned for our post-game show. We award the player of the game. Tonight's player of the game will receive a small player big play custom hoodie from Brute Athletic Apparel. Visit BruteProShop.com to find amazing apparel made locally in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. Tonight's broadcast is powered by Brute Athletic Apparel. Well, how about the two games we've seen the last within 24 hours? Last night, the 4A semifinal, Lampeter Strasburg and Jersey Shore. Down on the wire, four-point win for Jersey Shore. They go to the state title game for the first time ever. Here, we had a 21-0 Governor Mifflin lead. Looked like they were going to run away with this thing. Capitalized on three Pine Richland turnovers. They turned the ball over three times themselves. Pine Richland rallies, cuts it to 21-19. Mifflin extends again, gets two more scores. Gets another score, 41-26 at one point. Then we were tied at 41. They don't want to kick it deep either, I don't believe. Yep, they'll punch this one down the field. Uh, Aiden Martin on the return. Martin is not going to find any room that time. He gets stopped shy of the 35. So what do you do here if you're Jeff Lang and Governor Mifflin? You've hit a couple of trick plays. You've dialed them up at the right time, the Singleton halfback pass. Merrinack, we know, can throw down the seam. We've seen them try to do that at times today. What has to happen here on first down, second down? in order for them to get in position, and how quick do they Great have question. to get in position? Great question. We know a touchdown they need. They have to go 69 yards quickly, so they don't have the time to run, do their running game. Maybe you slip a run in every once in a while, but you got to be able to throw and get the ball down the field. Maranac will throw in the rollout, comeback route caught by Suber. Clock's going to move. they got to hustle up to the ball. Yeah, it was not enough for a first down. Should be enough for a gain of seven. Yep. 150 to go. Still got two timeouts, though, if you're Governor Mifflin. So they do have time. They got to hurry up, though. Maranac gets set, fires the other way. It's tipped and almost intercepted there is Miguel Jackson. Miguel Jackson, again, we didn't mention his name at all in the first half. Third quarter, he starts making his presence felt. He has been a problem for this Governor Mifflin offense the last quarter and a half. So third down and three. The unfortunate thing for Mifflin, this is not their offense. Unlike Pine Richland, they, they have plays to run in this situation. Mifflin has to obviously get the first down the next two plays and they have to hustle to the ball. Maranac out of the shotgun, going to throw it deep, looking down the field for Minnick. A lot of contact down there. They're not going to throw gonna a flag. No, gonna there. And that's going to fall incomplete and bring up fourth down. Negligible there. That I wouldn't have called anything either there. Actually, he had he was behind him. A lot of contact both ways down that way. Yeah. Good speed there by Minnick. Minnick was behind the defender. The ball just was put too far inside. So here it is, fourth down and three, 135 to go from the 38-yard line. Governor Mifflin has to convert to keep this drive alive, keep their hopes of getting to Hershey for the state title game alive as well. Suber and Martin are at the top of your screen. Minnick stays in the game, bottom of your screen. Merrinack stays in the shotgun. He's going to pitch it to Singleton. Singleton up the middle. He's not going to get there. And guess who is there first? It is Miguel Jackson who comes up with the huge stop again. And Pine Richland is 129 away from going to the state championship game opposite of Cathedral Prep. Very good defensive play. Ready right to read the play there by Pine Richland. Hats off to Governor Mifflin for an incredibly well-fought game. Pine Richland finds a way late. 
to win the football game. Great, great football game. Both teams well coached. Great effort by both football teams. Now, he is one of the best defensive linemen in the entire state. He was pretty quiet for most of this game until late. And Miguel Jackson has come up with a couple of huge plays for his team. Eric Spencer, or Cole Spencer, I beg your pardon, has done it on the ground. He's done it through the air. Now, let's go over this. You have two timeouts left for Mifflin, okay? So with two timeouts left and 129 on the clock, you, you can call two timeouts, but Pine Richland obviously is going to stay in bounds. So one of those, that 40-second play clock is going to move down. So, yes, you can get the ball back if you're Mifflin with not much time left. Bottom line, Pine Richland, if they do take a knee, they could maybe line up and shotgun, run around a little bit, take a knee, take about three to five seconds off. Do that twice. That would put it down to 119. Snap it on third down to 116, 115, and the 40 seconds would go off. So that would take it 40 below 115, take it all the way down to 35 seconds. You could would still get the ball back if you're Governor Mifflin after that fourth down play with around 32 to 30 seconds. So that's what I'm expecting to do, run around a little bit and fall down. Spencer in the shotgun will send his tight end Hasley in motion. Snap, handoff Schweiger right up the middle. Suber. And there's your timeout. Yep. The reason I say run around a little bit and don't hand the ball off, you, you avoid any kind of turnover, any kind of strip, anything like that. Other thing that Eric Kasparovic has done here in this second half we talked about Jackson defensively. He's put him in there as the extra blocker on offense, too, and that has been a big reason why the running game, it's no not great, but it's the running game has been more, much more effective here in the second half with no doubt. having Jackson in there as that extra blocker. Now, there's nothing wrong with running the football there. You're, you're running back, secured it. They're gonna, we're going to get this again. And it takes up a little bit more time, which is good. So it's going to, for Pine Richland, so for Pine Richland, Going to run the ball again. It'll take about five seconds. Another timeout by Mifflin. Put it down to 117. Third down, you run the ball. Put it down to about 113, 112. The clock, as we said, will not stop. Stay tuned for the post-game show. Tonight's player of the game is sponsored by Brute Athletic Apparel, your local manufacturer of custom sublimated uniforms. Want your team to stand out from the competition? Choose Brute, 100% custom, 100% local. Visit Brute.com for more information. Governor Mifflin trying to make one more stand here. They can stop the clock one more time. What they need is a turnover here. No clock, no time should go off the clock there. They should put one more second. It was 122, I believe, right? Just put the time back on the clock. Yep, they put it back. They put a second back. We're going to get the same exact play here, no doubt. Spencer. Quarterback keeping, same keep. idea up the middle. Yep, trying to break off the right side. He's able to Time out immediately, 117. Okay, let's go over this one more time. This next running play is going to take about four seconds. It'll put it to 113. They cannot call a timeout. The 40-second clock will start right around 113, 112. So take 40 from 112, it takes it down to 60 with 28 seconds. So 50, 40, 32 seconds, they'll have to snap the ball. They'll probably call a timeout on offense before their fourth down play at 32 seconds. And then you can just run a play, take about five seconds off, and then it'll be 27 to 28 seconds left for Mifflin to get a touchdown, which is not enough time unless you get a miracle Hail Mary of sorts. Stay tuned for our post-game show afterwards. Bruce Badgley will get our player of the game. We'll announce that here momentarily. And 
Pine Richland just has to basically get, and you're right, I mean, there's a chance here that Governor Mifflin may have one more crack at it. Yeah, look at the, Mifflin will get the ball back with 28 seconds. Right around it, 27, 28, 29 seconds. Snap to Spencer, and he'll hand off. Schweiger, it's not going to matter now. now. Yep, Schweiger will get the first down, and Pine Richland, which shakes off three first-quarter turnovers, they shake off a 21-point deficit, and they come back to stun Governor Mifflin and go to Hershey Park to play for the PIAA Class 5A State Championship. They'll be opposite of Cathedral Prep next weekend at Hershey Park Stadium. What an effort by the Rams here this afternoon. Our player of the game this afternoon will be the big guy for Pine Richland, Miguel Jackson. He made his presence known in the second half defensively, coming up with a couple of big plays and mentioned his use at the fullback spot. Extra Great effort blocker. by both football teams. Yeah, it there. really was. Great game. We've been fortunate to see two really good games here the last two nights within 24 hours. And Pine Richland rallies to stun Governor Mifflin 48-44 and win the PIAA semifinal. They are on to Hershey Park Stadium to take on Erie Cathedral Prep next weekend for the state title. Just check the times on the PIAA website. We'll be on the air for all six games next weekend from Hershey Park Stadium. What a game. What a season for Governor Mifflin. We're going to end it here with a, a loss in the PIAA semifinals. But, man, they, they everything in this game tonight, this afternoon, 21-0 lead. This Mifflin team shows a lot of resilience. They, get, they shake off the injuries to the two key starters on defense, and they're able to take a big lead. Pine Richland, though, just too much. We knew their offense was going to be a lot, but, man, are they a lot to handle and when they get rolling, it, it's it's basically downhill for that offense oh, when they get rolling. No doubt about it. Both offenses, very different kinds of offenses, different styles, but both very, very productive. And hats off to both teams for a, an incredibly fought football game. And that's what high school football in Pennsylvania is all about. Sadly for one, Governor Mifflin's season's ending. One game shy of going to the state title. Pine Richland is going back to another opportunity to win the whole thing in Hershey this time for the Rams. And for Pine Richland, this will be the fourth time they have made the state final. They're the first WPIL team to win a title in the WPIL in five classifications. State finalists in 2003, 2014, and they won it all in 17. They ran into St. Joe's Prep the last two times they were there. This time they're going to run into Cathedral Prep out of Erie. They are a perennial contender. They seem like every year they've been in the mix. They won a state title uh, years ago under Mike Mishler. Mike Mishler's return. They've been back a couple times since, and they have really just been one of the mainstays. We're going to get two of the best teams, best programs in the state of Pennsylvania in the 5A championship game next weekend. Bruce Badgley will be along here momentarily to bring you interviews with Eric Kasparovitz and also uh, Miguel Jackson, our player of the game. And then we'll get on out of here. But just some final thoughts here on this one. I mean, this, this was, I don't even know how you put this in words here. We saw two incredible games within 24 hours and uh, in less than 24 hours and both down to the wire. Offense is really coming to the forefront, making big plays. I mean, think about the game that Cole Spencer has. This kid is taking care of the football. He's got the gaudy numbers. He's one of the best passers in, in WPIL history. Has a miserable first quarter. And then there he is tearing down the sideline for what turns out to be the game-winning touchdown. I, mean, I think this story, you sum up this story of this game. Governor Mifflin came out and played their brand of football, capitalized on being very opportunistic with turno getting turnovers and turning them into scores. Then you look at the Pine Richland side. They didn't quit. They stayed together. They hit some really nice plays, including that wide receiver screen on fourth and four to get them on the scoreboard to get the ball rolling in their favor. Governor Mifflin at the end of the half comes down and scores to go up two scores. And in the second half, it's just back and forth. It really was. Cole Spencer, unofficially this afternoon, finished with 263 yards passing. He also ran the ball five times for 63 yards. 
And again, the Pine Richland running game, we know that it's not their focal point, but it's effective enough that it does what it needs to do to set other things up offensively. And then when you can have a quarterback who can run the ball like Spencer can, absolutely, you know, you can turn it over to him in, in key spots to get big gains. Uh, Eli O'Kem with seven catches for 137 yards and a couple of touchdowns. For Governor Mifflin, Nick Singleton finished with 26 carries for 122 yards. Strasser, the fullback, with 22 for 101. Right when it looked like Mifflin was ready to put this game away, they gave Pine Richland incredible field position on kickoff returns. And you, you can't give a Pine Richland team a field that short several times in a row, and it put Pine Richland right back in the football game. And Pine Richland capitalized on hitting number five on those post routes off play action, and he was wide open both times. Quarterback, great pass and catch, and the rest is history. Bruce Badgley is working to get our post-game interviews here down on the field with Miguel Jackson and... Been a heck of a couple of days here in the state semifinals. Fabulous season for Governor Mifflin. Pine Richland is going to get to continue one more game next week for the 5A state title. Bruce Badgley is waiting for Pine Richland head coach Eric Asperovitz down on the sideline. Uh, he's meeting with the local media here, so... We'll await him and also our player of the game, Miguel Jackson. Miguel Jackson standing pat there. I, the perfect timing for him to step up, too, I think. I mean, his plays are not going to be in the box score, but for him to step up at the right time and get pressure on Maranac, force a sack, you know, he made a big play knocking a pass down. Absolutely. He, and there's the extra blocker. I mean, his, his statistics aren't going to be as gaudy as Spencer. They're not going to be as gaudy as Yo Kim. But he is as important of any piece to this Pine Richland puzzle. And no doubt about it. No doubt about it. He said he wanted to be one of the best defensive linemen in, in the state, and he certainly is that, headed to Liberty. As we're waiting here for Bruce is in the mix there with Coach Kasparovitz and – See if he can pull him away here momentarily. As we're watching the media scrum down in the field. So you see Nick Singleton and Miguel Jackson. They are exchanging pleasantries over in that Governor Mifflin sideline. Those two went at it all game long. Great effort by Nick Singleton this season. He is back for a senior year next year with Governor Mifflin, just a junior. Mifflin will lose Cam Stewart and they'll lose uh, Greg Suber. Wes Grillo is also gone as well. But they have some pieces that are back next year for this Governor Mifflin team. Nate Goodman specifically, they'll have to figure out their offensive line next year, but who, who doesn't annually? And Bruce Badgley is getting set here to get us the two interviews. Eric Asperovitz really has become one of the best coaches in the state of Pennsylvania. 90 wins as head coach of Pine Richland. And you see there Miguel Jackson and Eric Asperovitz going to step up here with our Bruce Badgley. And we will send it down to the field. And Bruce Badgley, who is with our player of the game, and you got Miguel Jackson. Okay, Bruce Badgley down on the field. I'm here with Coach Eric Kasparowitz and uh, Miguel Jackson, our game MVP. What was it like out there? I mean, what a hard-hitting affair. Yes, sir. You know, <clears throat> is that a battle out? First half, you know, I don't know what was happening, shooting herself in the foot. Second half, he came back, made adjustments, you know, just took over. Defense made plays, offense, outstanding, outstanding work out there. You know, just made plays out there and just just took it over. Now, I just got to finish next week. Coach, you said out there you'd never been in a game like this. Uh, maybe, you know, St. Joe's in 14, but what was it like on the sidelines? It was it was nuts. I mean, like, we got smacked in the mouth. I mean, I, was a, I told the kids, a life lesson right there. We got our butts kicked there early. And then what are you going to do? That shows a character of a team, of a person. We got our butts kicked in the first half. We made adjustments. Our kids didn't quit. They came back, got fought, and you saw what happened in the second half. But hats off to Mifflin. They're a good, tough, physical football team. Um, you know, that's a great high school football game. 
Uh, great high school football game, but one more, Miguel. What about it? Hey, it's time to go finish now. Let's, start, let's go finish. Let's go, baby. Go let's to go. Hershey. Go to Hershey. Next. And it's all about finish. One more, Coach. What do you think? That's it. That's our mantra all year. Finish, finish, finish. And we're close. One away. Um, we're going to enjoy this, though. This is a heck of a game. Um, I'm so proud of Miguel and these seniors, what they were able to accomplish. And, again, just the, 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 the resiliency, right? I mean, it was, it was looking bleak there for a while, but not once did anybody quit. Yeah. Clearly, you guys never quit. And uh, just to let you know, Miguel, for player of the game, you, you don't get this one, but we're going to make a nice custom hoodie for you so that you get your name, player of the game, everything else is going to be sweet, man. You'll be able to wear that around with pride this year. Well, listen, thank you very much. Hey, listen, I will see you guys in Hershey next week, okay? Take care now, all right? All right, back up to Eric. Bruce Padgley, thank you very much. Miguel Jackson, our game MVP. Eric Asperovitz, thanks for their time as Pine Richland defeats Governor Mifflin today, 48-44. And as we wrap things up here from Hollidaysburg High School, what a, a two, two days we've had calling these semifinals. I mean, last night the four-point win by Jersey Shore. They go to the 4A championship, and here today a game equally as good. A little weirder, I guess, is the best way to describe sure. it because you had the turnovers, the injuries, all the, the different things that happened here today, but it all added up to a Pine Richland victory here, 48-44. Eric, the thing I take away from the two games that we've done in the last 24 hours, how all four teams, two teams, end, it ended in heartbreak, two teams that ended in, in jubilation, but all four teams competed, and they competed hard. They were well coached. They, they battled through this whole adversity they've been facing with COVID and everything else, and they just played their hearts out. And that's what it's all about. That's what sports are all about. High school football in Pennsylvania. Been around it my whole life, and it just makes me so proud to see kids here in 2020 giving every single thing they have and, and leaving nothing left, and that's what it's all about. All right, that'll do it here from Tiger Stadium in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. We will talk to you next Friday morning for the start of the six PIAA state championship games from Hershey Park Stadium. We'll be on the air around... 11:50 on Friday morning, Black Friday morning, and uh, again, just check the PIAA website for the times. They're gonna, they may rearrange some times here due to travel and get these teams in and out. Uh, they're gonna crunch these six games into two days to get the season over with. But Pine Richland is gonna go to Hershey. They're gonna try to finish off what they tried to start last year. They'll get a chance to do it this season. They will take on Erie Cathedral Prep in the 5A state championship game. For my partner, for Chapman, for Bruce Badgley down on the sideline, for John King, our producer, all of our staff here, big thanks to Hollidaysburg for the accommodations, and we will talk to you next Friday from Hershey Park Stadium. Pine Richland wins at 48-44. They're on to Hershey to play for a state title. Have a great rest of the weekend. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Take care, and bye-bye.